today's doubleheader when the Kansas Jayhawks head to Columbia to take on the Tigers. Must situation for the Missouri Tigers to, to win this when they need to defend their home floor. While they had some problems, those problems have not really come up in Columbia. They've all been out on the road. Uh, you can expect the Tigers to be jacked up and really ready to make an effort, but Kansas will let you feel like you're in the game in the first half, but then a lot of times the Jayhawks just wear people down with their depth and their ability. It's all over here. The guns are blazing. The Cowboys have won it 83 to 60. Kansas State not able to get back in it. Today's game is brought to you by Phillips 66, the performance company, makers of high quality, super clean gasoline and Trop Arctic premium motor oil. Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, the low fare airline. Chrysler Plymouth and your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. And Pizza Hut, home of the stuffed crust pizza. Final score, 83 to 60. Oklahoma State with a big 14 point lead at the half and ends up winning it by 23. And Paul, I don't know about you, but of all the possible scenarios we might see today, this is not one I expected. I felt like Oklahoma State had a chance to win it, but by 23? Well, not the not the final score of the 23 points. Certainly, that is a surprise. But the way they did it, I think that's pretty much a trademark of Eddie Sutton. You think about that defense that they put on Kansas State in the first eight to ten minutes of the ball game. The turnovers that they forced. I mean, that's that, that's classic Eddie Sutton type basketball. Solid defense. It creates everything else that you want to do offensively. Had a huge day out of Jerome Lambert. Quality players many times can carry a team. That's what happened to Oklahoma State today. We're going to send it now to Studio 66 and John Sanders. John. All right, Keith, thank you very much. Good job by Keith uh, Murphy and Paul Splithorf in that game, and certainly got out of hand, surprisingly so. Of course, Kansas State making an awful lot of turnovers, especially early in the ball game, just very sloppy, and once they got down, they could not get back in it, so the Cowboys win it with ease, 83-60. to 60. Kansas State has lost its last three, and maybe Eddie Sutton can get the Cowboys back in the NCAA picture before it's all over. But right now, let's update what happened to Kansas State and Oklahoma State with some highlights now. Eddie Sutton, of course, trying to get his Cowboy team back together, trying to get them on a roll, get them headed toward the NCAA tournament, certainly getting ready for the Big 8 tournament. The steal, Adrian Peterson lays it in. That's what they did all throughout the first half. They did this to Tyrone Davis. Took it away from him, and Lambert, who had a career game, slams it home. Dorsey now offensively from outside. That is a three-pointer. Andre Owens had some foul trouble, but a beautiful steal, and he goes coast to coast, lays in that basket. And then Chad Alexander steps up for a three-pointer, and it was all Cowboys. Their fans at Gallagher Iba Arena enjoyed the final score there. That game is now over 83 to 60. Oklahoma State has defeated Kansas State. 83-60 is the final from Stillwater. Now, Texas Tech and Texas A&M in action. A couple of teams that will be in the Big 12 next year. And uh, on the move, coast to coast, for the layup for Tech is Jason Sensor. And then Tracy Anderson for three-pointer. Outside hits that three. And then A&M going inside. And there is Garvin Ham. And now this is Corey Carr from outside, a three-pointer. The Aggies coming in, battling the 13th-ranked team in the country just spins off. There is the final score. Quite a battle. Tech and A&M going at it at A&M this afternoon. Two future members of the Big 12. And the final there is 66 to 63. Texas Tech, number 13 in the country, has defeated Texas A&M. And you can see that Sasser, 19 points in that ball game. Anderson had 19 points. So we have wrapped that one up. Kansas State, a huge loss to Oklahoma State. And we also welcome those of you who have been watching Iowa State. Another impressive performance by the Cyclones in handling Nebraska at home. A great afternoon once again for Dedrick Willoughby. And the Cyclones just keep right on winning. They're in good shape for the NCAAs. You'd have to think that they have done a terrific job so far. So big wins so far for Oklahoma State and also for Iowa State. We'll have a lot more from Studio 66. Today's Big 8 basketball game is brought to you by Phillips 66, the performance company, makers of high-quality, super-clean gasoline and Trop Arctic premium motor oil. By Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, the low-fare airline. 
by Chrysler Plymouth and your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. And by Pizza Hut, home of the all-new Triple Decker Pizza. Have one delivered today. Silver Bullet, it's shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Tap the Rockies! When you fly the low fare airline, you can bring your spouse along for free. Because friends fly free on Southwest Airlines. Or you can even take your partner, Jack. Anywhere we fly. Just make round trip reservations and buy your ticket at Southwest Low, unrestricted full fare, and a friend flies with you free. And there's only one day advance purchase. Hey, you can even bring along your boss. Friends fly free on Southwest, the low fare airline. Welcome back once again to Studio 66. We're getting set for the second half of our Big 8 doubleheader on this full Saturday of Big 8 basketball, courtesy Phillips 66. That game, of course, will be Kansas playing at Missouri, and we'll see if the Tigers can maybe slow down the Red Hot Jayhawks, who are off to their best start in 25 years. We've also finished the first two games, and they turned out to be pretty one-sided. Eddie Sutton's team, an excellent job, and defensively in the first half, they just kept taking it away from the Wildcats. Adrian Peterson lays it in for two. Then they mug Tyrone Davis. Dorsey takes it away from him. Lambert slams it in. Lambert had that big, big day, and Dorsey stepping outside for the three-pointer. That is good for him. Andre Owens got in some foul trouble, but look at the speed, the steal, the layup for Oklahoma State. The Cowboys on a roll throughout the day. And Chad Alexander off the bench knocks in that three-pointer. It was that kind of day for the folks in Stillwater. 80-63, to 63, Oklahoma State has defeated Kansas State one of the first games of our doubleheader. Now let's check out from the Big East, the Georgetown-Syracuse game. There's Jim Beheim at home trying to do a job. And John Wallace finishes the alley-oop. And Wallace again with a steal. Now watch this slam. This is with authority as he grinds it home. And Georgetown is always tough to win at the carry at home. Syracuse is terrific there. Bubakar Al takes it in. And this is Al with a dunk. Now Syracuse, John Wallace scoring off a pass from Todd Bergen down low. The Cuse trying to get some revenge against Georgetown. Let's update that score. It is a 12-point lead in the second half. Iverson, you see, only five points. Wallace with a dozen points for Syracuse this afternoon. Some more scores now. North Carolina has taken the lead in the second half. Less than six to play, 70 to 67 over Georgia Tech. Louisville with a 60 to 56 lead over UAB. And UAB coming, they were down big. They bounced back. Villanova on the road winning at Rutgers by 12, 76, 64. Number 11, Virginia Tech over Xavier. 78, 73 was the final there. 69-64, Purdue has defeated Michigan. UCLA and Stanford coming up a little bit later. Now we're going to take you back to Ames, Iowa. Chris Piper is standing by to interview one of the stars for the surprising Cyclones, Dedrick Willoughby. So back we go to Ames and Chris Piper. Chris? Thank you, John. We're definitely with the star of the game, Dedrick Willoughby. 29 points, career high. Game started out a little bit slow, but all of a sudden you turn it up. Yeah, um, they were kind of playing like a boxing one on me early. And... Um we weren't particularly getting the ball inside to start the game like we wanted to. And uh, we just started bombing away from the outside early, and that started that set the tempo for the game. And we kind of settled down and got a couple of nice, easy bucks about the plate. Did you guys expect Nebraska to come out as lethargic as they were? It really, the, I think uh, the expectations were Nebraska to come out and give you guys a strong game, but all of a sudden they just kind of fell off. Yeah, um, Nebraska's uh, strength is a uh, transition. They like to get the ball out the basket and, and uh, run with it. We wanted to slow them down you know, defensively uh, and give ourselves a chance to win the ball game because we're not a dominant team where we can run up and down the floor with uh, teams like Nebraska. Uh, we, we made a mistake against Kansas trying to exchange basketball, and we didn't want to do the same thing here. Do you feel like you're in a zone tonight? Every time you looked at it, you were hitting it. I remember one shot against Tom Wall. The clock was down to 10 seconds. You shook him off a little bit, and all of a sudden you had a wide open three. Yeah, uh, it, it felt good. Everything had felt good leaving my hand tonight. And uh, I credit my teammates for giving me the ball, you know. Every time I shot, it was like, you know, every time I caught the ball, they would shoot the ball. They would shoot the ball. And uh, Carlo Walton was the main one on the bench, you know, cheering me on. And, uh, I just thank Coach for the opportunity to play here. Well, you guys are second in the Big 8 right now. Were you surprised about that, or you feel like uh, you guys deserve to be there, and you, it really wasn't a surprise at all for you? I think we deserve to be here. We, we've been playing extremely hard. Um, based on 
on what the, the expectation was in the beginning of the year. We came together and we played like a real good group. Um, guys never bicker at one another. We always lock in the team effort. And um, I think we deserve to be here. And, um, we would like to be in first place against Kansas, but, uh, you know, time will tell. <laughs> time will tell. What are you expecting with the rest of the season? You got some tough games ahead of you, but you really feel like you got a good nucleus going. Yeah, um, this team is coming together great, and um, we just have to lock in Wednesday, Wednesday when we play Kansas here, you know, get this Hilton crowd back in the game like they were tonight, and um, take take this next stretch, you know, the road games, and uh, see if we can take maybe one or two on the road and see what happens then. All right, well, thanks, Cedric. Great game. Good luck the rest of the season. John, back to you. All right, Chris, thank you very much. We have a lot more to come. Or we're between games, getting set for Kansas and Missouri. We're going to go back and talk to Eddie Sutton, the Cowboy coach, right after this. Stay with us. More to come from Studio 66. There is a road that exists, I think, in the mind of every Chrysler engineer. A bending, twisting, wonderful road that serves as a reminder of why we build cars. We've got very sophisticated independent suspensions, multi-valve engines, and cab forward dramatically improved stability. They're just wonderful machines to drive. Thanks in part to that road in all of us. Eight great teams, two great seats, one last time. Win a trip for two to the final Phillips 66 Big A Basketball Tournament, plus free Phillips 66 gasoline to the year 2001 in the Phillips 66 Gasoline Odyssey Sweepstakes. Enter and you can win free Phillips 66 gasoline for one year, two years, five years, or one of thousands of basketballs up for grabs. Sign up today for the Phillips 66 Gasoline Odyssey Sweepstakes at participating Phillips 66 stations. Back once again, Studio 66, a big win for Iowa State over Nebraska, 74 to 59. A huge win for Oklahoma State over Kansas State, 83 to 60 was the final there. The Cowboys were all over the Wildcats, especially in the first half defensively. K-State kept turning it over and turning it over. Now standing by with the winning coach, Eddie Sutton, is Paul Splitter, part of our crew down there in Stillwater. So let's go to them right now for the latest on the post game. Paul? Eddie Sutton joins us now. A, a great defensive effort. It looked like your defense, at least the first 10 minutes of the ball game, creating turnovers. Uh, that's classic Eddie Sutton basketball, wasn't it? Well, we've uh, been playing much better, Paul, the last three games, uh, even though we lost the other night down in Norman. I thought our team played well, and our defense is, has really carried us in those three games, but we're shooting the ball better, and tonight, I guess, or this afternoon, I should say, uh, we forced the Wildcats into 15 first-half turnovers, and that probably was the biggest thing. This is the first time, though, the last uh, 10 days that we've been healthy all season. And, uh, guys, it's a little easier to coach when you got all your soldiers out there. <laughs> Mo Robinson put in a, a number of good minutes for you today. Still not starting for you, not in, in game shape to, to go deep into the ball game. Do your plans change for him a little bit over the next couple of weeks? Will he get into the starting lineup, or do you continue to use him off the bench like you did today? Oh, I think we'll probably uh, continue to bring him off the bench. Uh, we, that's one thing that's helped our ball club. We're getting good uh, point production and good play off of the uh, wood. Today, I thought Marlon Dorsey came uh, into the game and really did a nice job for us. Uh, Chad Alexander did the same. So uh, if we're going to continue to win, we're certainly going to have to depend on people like uh, Mo Robinson. But uh, I like that starting lineup, the, the way we've been playing. The talk here in, in Stillwater is that you can still make the tournament. How realistic is, is that chance, and, and what are you going to have to do to get there? Well, I think if we continue to play like we have in the last three games, we'll be in every ball game. We still have uh, three games remaining here, and we've only lost six times in six years. So we feel very comfortable and confident when we play anyone here. Uh, we have to go to Nebraska and Missouri and Colorado. Uh, we got started uh, really uh, with a, uh, I've never had a team where you, at midseason you uh, had a losing record in conference play, so it's a new experience for me. But this team believes they can win every game, and uh, if they've got that kind of attitude, then you got a chance. Coach, thank you for the time, and good luck the rest of the way. Okay, Paul. Our thanks to Paul Splithorp and, of course, Coach Eddie Sutton trying to get those Cowboys back in gear. Certainly a team that is in gear right now are the Cyclones of Iowa State. They were picked to finish last in the conference. They are not going to finish last. Let's go back to Dave Armstrong, Chris Piper. Gentlemen, my question is, when are people going to realize just how good the Cyclones can be? 
Well, I think they're realizing it now, John. I think that basically the players and the coaches have realized it for a long time. It's just taking those of us in the media a long time to get around yeah, to. Yeah, we're it. the stupid ones. We can't <laughs> figure out that these guys are actually pretty darn good. They come out with a, a game plan, and they do what they're supposed to do. They, they control the ball. Uh, they get to the free throw line, and they don't make uh, stupid mistakes. And Dedrick Willoughby is really providing some great offense for Iowa State right now. He really is. Uh, a game-high 29 points. He does th other things for him. Uh, he makes steals. Uh, we're going to get a chance here to take a, a look at a good defensive play here by Iowa State and throwing the ball out front to Dedrick Willoughby racing. He actually created that early. Joe Moderman picked it up. But Dedrick Willoughby really a surprise player as far as the Big 8, but I'm sure not a surprise player for Iowa State. Seven three-pointers for Willoughby today, including six of nine from the free throw line, and that's where he's getting a lot of points as well. And then there's Kenny Pratt. He does the damage for the Cyclones inside. Well, he's a second-half player, no doubt about it. In the first half, he struggled. In the second half, he gets the ball inside. This is where Iowa State really felt Nebraska was weak. Inside, letting Kenny Pratt get the ball, take it to the basket. A strong player, a lot like Amber Crombie down in Oklahoma. He really maintains himself. So, John, I guess to answer your question, yes, people are starting to realize that Iowa State is for real. In fact, yesterday when we were visiting with Tim Floyd, I said, I think this surprise thing is really overblown. I think the reason that Iowa State is surprising people is because no one knew what they had. They had to replace so many players. Well, that's right. There are a lot of new faces. You really don't know what to expect. Some of these guys didn't play a lot at the schools that they played at before. All of a sudden, he's got a unit. They believe in, believe in themselves. We heard Dedrick Willoughby talk about the cohesiveness of this team. Really, that's what it's all about. On the opposite, si opposite side, Nebraska, no team chemistry right now, and you see what happens. And, Chris, to go to the other end of the spectrum and talk about surprises, Nebraska's surprising with how poorly they're playing right now. Unbelievably surprising. I'm sure, I'm sure Danny Nee just pulling his hair out. This is a team with a lot of talent, some seniors they really expected to do well this year, and all of a sudden they've got some sniping going on within the ranks. They really need their seniors to step forward. This season is not over. There's a lot of basketball left to be played, and I'm sure if they can get that point across, that can be a, a real strong team come tournament time. So a break comes at the right time for Danny Dean. They've got a week off till they host Oklahoma State one week from today. Let's go back to John Sanders. All right. Thank you very much, Dave and Chris. Good job there. And Iowa State continues to surprise and amaze. They're now 6-2. and two. They're a force to be reckoned with in the Big 8. We'll be back. More to come from Studio 66. Some people are doing more business than ever on Fridays. The Denver deal doable, Donnie? Good. Help your business do more business with Sprint's amazing offer. For one full year, Fridays are free. No, I'll call you back. It's Friday. Every long-distance call you make on Fridays is free. The rest of the week, you get Sprint's great low-flat rate. Okay, Sue, I'll call you next Friday. Call now. 1-800-598-5000. Don't miss another free Friday. Only from Sprint Business. Coach, what do you think? Son, it's not what you look like or how big you are. It's what you've got deep down inside. You can't see it. It's hidden. But believe me, it's there. I made the team. No, <laughs> not a chance. I was talking about this pizza. <sighs> the new triple-decker pizza from Pizza Hut, hidden inside two thin crusts, is a six-cheese blend for a huge cheese taste. You know, son, I do need another guard. Night, kid. Once again, experts are predicting an easy winter. For Jeep Cherokee sport owners, anyway, its 190 horsepower engine, four wheel drive, and anti lock brakes turn even the harshest conditions into a day at the beach. And now get no charge air and over $1,300 in option package values. Jeep Cherokee Sport, the perfect way to turn a wild winter into a mild winter. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Next stop on the Big 8 Express for this Saturday afternoon is right there, Columbia, Missouri, the Hearn Center. Kansas and Missouri set to do battle. We'll get you out there for the start of that game in just a moment. A couple of other scores we can update now from Studio 66. Take a look at some of the results and play from this afternoon. Georgetown and Syracuse, for example, have battle in uh, Syracuse in the Carrier Dome. Those two teams going at it. Old rivals, they're both now in the Big East 7. Syracuse did have a 12-point lead. Let's update some other scores now. Coming up next, Missouri and Kansas. Get set for that. It'll be along in about five minutes. The Jayhawks trying to go to 8 0. Missouri trying to get their act together. We'll see if the Tigers can do it this afternoon. The second stop is coming up in the finals. Iowa State, a big win over Nebraska, 74 59. Oklahoma State, 83 to 60 over Kansas State. It's Missouri and Kansas next. Stay with us.
Hey, you'll get it back when you get one of these, rookie. This is the latest from News Channel 4. Crews have temporarily stopped rescue efforts in northern Japan, where a rock slide trapped some 20 people in a crushed tunnel. They're trying to avoid another rock slide. A statue outside Kansas City, Missouri's federal building was dedicated today in memory of those who lost their lives in the Oklahoma City bombing. More news in one hour from Kansas City's 24-hour news channel. Just how secure is self-storage? Tonight at 9. The Hearn Center in Columbia, Missouri, where today for the 231st time, Kansas and Missouri meet in college basketball. This is always the toughest ticket in Missouri when these two teams get together to play. This is the 97th consecutive sellout here at Hearns. How tough is it? I'm supposed to be in there doing the game. John Sunvold's in there. He's got a lifetime pass. He played at Missouri. I got a problem, folks. I got to get in. John, John, if you're watching this, would you please come up to this door and help me get in? Please, John. John, I can't get in. John. Well, the Hearn Center is empty now, but in a couple minutes, this place will be rocking and will be crazy. It's Missouri and Kansas. And you know what, folks? This is an exciting ball game, especially for fans, the coaches. But what's it mean for players? I've been in a few of these battles, and the one thing about it, you hear about it all week long. Missouri, Kansas. You have to beat the Jayhawks. You have to beat the Tigers to make it a successful year. I had professors in the business school say, John, good luck this Saturday. It's the only week and the only ball game they said good luck. They wanted to always talk about schoolwork. What's it mean for two teams? Missouri hasn't played real well this year, kind of struggling. But the one thing they want to do, they want to come out, make this place crazy, get some defensive rebounds, get on the floor, keep it crazy the whole ball game. Then you have a chance. If you're Kansas, first you're good, you know you're good. You walk out here, you establish your game, put the ball in Jock Vaughn's hands, let him run the show, make some open three-pointers, make the crowd silent. See if you can put everybody back in their seat in the Hearn Center. But if it was that easy, we wouldn't toss the ball up. So we'll see in a little bit. Today's Big 8 game is being brought to you by Phillips 66, the performance company, makers of high-quality, super-clean gasoline and the Trop Arctic Premium Motor Oil. By Coors Light, chipped cold to preserve the clean taste of the Rockies. Coors Light, cap the Rockies. By Sonic, who invites you to drive in for a change. By Chrysler Plymouth and your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. And by Southwest Airlines, fly Southwest, the low fare airline. When you fly the low fare airline, you can bring your spouse along for free. Because friends fly free on Southwest Airlines. Or you can even take your partner, Jack, anywhere we fly. Just make round trip reservations and buy your ticket at Southwest Low, unrestricted, full fare, and a friend flies with you free. And there's only one day advance purchase. Hey. You can even bring along your boss. Friends fly free on Southwest, the low fare airline. play it, the whole new line of Plymouths is a whole lot of fun. Our drive through will have two windows. Why two? We take their money in the first window. If the order is wrong, who cares? We've already got their money. Oh, I like it! At Sonic, we care about food, not windows. Like cherry limeades, cheese tater tots, or our made-to-order Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe. Your choice right now, just 99 cents. So break away from the ordinary and drive into something different. Sonic, drive it for a change.
And welcome now inside a jam-packed turn for this afternoon. The Tigers of Missouri and the Jayhawks of Kansas resume one of the oldest rivalries in college basketball. Hi, everybody. I'm Fred White. John Sunvold let me in. I'll be forever grateful. <laughs> John, good rivalry. Could be a good basketball game. The common thinking in the Big 8 is if anybody is going to stop Kansas and turn this thing into a race, it probably has to happen here and now. Yeah, everybody thought Missouri was going to be a top ball club, maybe to finish second in the Big 8 and be in the top 20. Hasn't been that way all year, but throw out the records, Fred, because today is a new day and Tigers will probably play well. So here we go. Let's take a look at the day's starting lineups brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Flying the low fare airline, just plain smart for Kansas, Paul Pierce, Rafe LaFrance, Scott Pollard, Jacques Vaughn, Jared Haas. The same lineup that they have started every game this year. And there's Roy Williams, his career against Missouri. He's 8-6, and six, and that's a lot better than it sounds against Norm Stewart's ball club for your career. And for Missouri, there's Norm Stewart on the bench. He has changed starting lineups a lot. He's had 10 different players start this year. Today, it's Julian Winfield, Kelly Thames, Simeon Haley, Kendrick Moore, and Jason Sutherland at the guard. And there is Norm Stewart, below 500, actually, against Kansas in his career. Not many teams, if anybody else, has ever done that to him. Missouri needs a good start here, John. Two high-scoring basketball teams, two strong rebounding teams. The difference has been defense. Usually, Norm's clubs known for strong defense have been weak of late. Well, there have been years, you know, when Norm Stewart's offenses aren't that good. Defense has always been the tradition that if you're Missouri Tiger. This year is a different ball club. Last week they gave up 106 at Colorado, 104 against Oklahoma, and then they beat Nebraska 99-98. They will have to play defense. Kansas is fast, they're big, they're strong, and they can shoot the basketball. So Missouri's work is cut out today. And one thing about Kansas, if you're going to beat them, you better be ready to play 40 minutes because they're going to come at you hard for 40 solid minutes. Well, that's why you're ranked number three in the country. They'll play, you know, it's just not a two-minute ball game. It's not just emotion for two minutes and the game's over. It lasts the whole time. And if you're a good ball club, you understand that. You say, hey, the crowd may be noisy against us. Just hang in there. And this Kansas ball club will put it for 40 minutes. They'll put it together. But the one thing you know, the side of the Crimson and Blue could get Missouri going. Maybe play one of their best basketball games here. You've been in the middle of this rivalry a number of times as a player. Pretty unpredictable. Well, no matter how good you are or how bad your ball club points, this is a whole new thing. Let's watch the Tigers start. Haley outside, Sutherland for three. And that's a good start for the Tigers. Well, this kid has really been on a roll Big 8 season. Leads the Big 8 in three-point shooting. He strokes the ball really well. That's a good start for this Missouri team. Now let's watch the Tiger defense as Hass tries to answer and does. <laughs> Sutherland and Hass. I like to say twin sons of different mothers. You look at them, they play hard. Both fans hate the other kid. You know, Kansas fans hate Sutherland, Missouri fans hate him. They're hard-nosed players, and they compete every time out. Uh, where would you like to be besides here right now in the middle of one of these things? This is as much fun as it gets when you get one of these kind of rivalries going, and Haley with a little jump hook. Simeon Haley. One of the keys I wrote down to the ball game for me would be the fact the Haley brothers are going to have to play well. It's Simeon in there now. Last year, Sammy in Lawrence had 14 points and 9 rebounds. Neither one has played particularly well, but both have to step up this afternoon. Pass a little short with it, and Pollard tangled up to Simeon Haley, and Pollard is going to be called for the personal foul, the first in the game. That can't be good for Kansas. Well, Missouri off to a good start. Throw the ball inside and see what the defense does to react to it. Pass turns his head. Sullen, great spot-up shooter. You have to get back to him. Don't worry so much about Haley. Make him beat you. Second time down, they go to Haley. He makes a quick little jump hook. Knocks in the basket. And when the ball went inside at the other end of Pollard, he was called to get inside. He was called on a foul for pushing down in there. That's not a real good sign for Kansas. They need the rugged inside game. Kansas very physical, very aggressive. Rely on that man to box out when you take it to the basket. Scott Pollard just got another one, his 56th block of the year. Even after losing Greg Ostertag, this Kansas team continues to block a lot of shots, and that's an intimidating factor. Well, what that does is your guard play or your small forward outside, you can put so much pressure defensively, knowing LaFrance and Pollard are back there, that they can adjust shots and make it difficult for the opposing team to score. Two-point lead, Mizzou. We are just underway here in Columbia and another capacity crowd on hand and a good atmosphere. They're lively here today. They've been criticized a few times by Norm this year for being a little quiet. Not so, so far today. You mentioned in the opening how Kansas would like to quiet that crowd and Jock Vaughn gets the game time. Kansas and Roy Williams has had success here, and that's one of the reasons why. You keep it in Vaughn's hand, he can do so many things. If you get going, start it early, and the Tigers don't get into a flow, that's a good thing for Kansas. Oh, Haley right back to things, but knocked out of there again by Scott Pollard. And a foul call. You 
you know, often we talk about Vaughn being the leader, and, and that he is. Doesn't look to score all that much, but when he wants to, he can. If he gets it in that area, he's awfully tough. And when he gets there, a lot of times he'll draw two or three guys, then he makes a pass. He is one of the best in the country. Foul on Jared Hass, his first, Kansas second, Payne's free throw, good. Missouri, a rarity of college basketball today. They're a good free throwing team. Kelly Thames, a 79% shooter, and then you got Jason Southern leading the conference right now, and Derry Grimm right behind him. They are both at nearly 90%. They shoot 73%, close to that in Big A conference play. That's something you want when you get down the stretch of ball games. It won the Nebraska game the other night, Wednesday night, when they won by one point. They knocked in all their free throws down the stretch to win that ball game. Danny Alouche doesn't play that much, but he's an 83 percent shooter. Missouri now 2-2-1, full court pressure. And to slow down Kansas and Jock Vaughn, and probably one of the keys, I think, John, is to find a way to slow Kansas down if you can. Well, and you'd like to get the ball out of Vaughn's hands. They tried it that time, but Vaughn just handled it, and Missouri goes back to man-to-man. -man. Settled it on Hass, down inside, handy defending corner, blocked his shot, and then lost it out of bounds. Look at that Tiger bench over there. They are pumped up. Well, you see the smile on Haley's face. Again, I know Norm Stewart, and he's told his ball club it doesn't last for only three minutes. It has to be 40 minutes. Haley allows Pollard in way too deep, but he stands there. He's got size. He's got long arms. He can block some shots. John, I didn't see all of the Missouri practice last night. What I did see, Norm Stewart was very positive, very enthusiastic, very encouraging. They honestly had a really good practice from an offensive point of view. They were running their stuff really well last night. Well, you're talking about a man that's been in nearly 50% of all games in the history of Missouri. One more game, and he'll be in 50% of all the games ever played as a player, assistant coach, head coach. He's played in this battle, Missouri-Kansas, and he's coached many games in it. He wants his kids feeling good about themselves as they enter today's ballgame. And he knows, he said, hey, we have to play the best possible game to beat this Kansas team. I saw Roy Williams with a question. There's Norm Stewart getting a clarification. And they still are not getting play started. They're having trouble with the shot clock. And I think Roy Williams' question is how much time should be on the shot clock. It's 13 seconds is what it is. And now that's, that's going to change again. <laughs> and that's, that's why Coach Williams is, a, yeah, this is interesting. Now maybe... Norm Stewart will probably get up and say, that's too much. No, it shouldn't be that much. <laughs> <laughs> Roy said, okay, 19's fine with me. Let's play. I was going to say, that's one of the things you shoot it on the inbounds pass. <laughs> After all that. Jock Vaughn drops it inside. Ray Lafrentz knocked away. Kelly Thames couldn't go on to it. He's on the baseline, but they're playing strong interior defense right now. Yeah, right now, it, the emotion is carrying him defensively. Kansas has been patient. Nice pass by Vaughn. Thames goes around the side, has terrific hands, just doesn't get there quick enough. LaFrance, off balance shot, will go, slapped away by Mizzou, out of bounds. It'll be Kansas basketball. Well, now they have eight seconds on the shot clock. Is that a shot? Well, didn't hit the rim, no, so they get there, so it's going to be eight on the shot clock. Jacques Vaughn. Pierce off the baseline. He's tough, isn't he? Yeah, awfully good for a freshman. Tough matchup for Winfield. Winfield, very good defender one-on-one -on, -one on the basketball, but he's given up about three inches to Paul Pierce. Pierce is an explosive player. That was a long stretch of time when the clock didn't move, and the game now tied at seven, and Kansas will get it back. The shot clock going down. Sutherland helps out because he knows the clock's running down. Pierce still patient enough to take it baseline. Boy, he's a good-looking player. Brazil again, man-to-man. -man. Let's watch the Kansas attack here. A lot of motion to their offensive work. They set a lot of picks. They free up a lot of bodies. All five players averaging double figures on the starting five. Pollard set the pick for half. Did you notice with any way for a press way out as far out as he was? He'll shoot the three. And Kelly Thames didn't give him an inch out there. He came out and covered it. Kendrick Moore to the baseline. Tried to shovel it up there and walk. Well, he got a foul instead. Looks like they'll get Jock Vaughn with a, a little push underneath. Jock Vaughn with his first foul. That's three on Kansas. And Vaughn, a very aggressive defender, and early in the season had some foul problems. Some of the ball games, the Utah ball game, he sat out some minutes. They need him to stay in this ball game, especially early. Winfield, high post. Simeon Haley walked to the basketball, and it 
Jayhawks get it back, tied at 7, 16-21 left in the first half. As often happens when strong rivals play, you hit a little dead spot in a basketball game where the ball gets turned over back and forth because of the intensity. We're in one of those right now. And most coaches, again, they, they'll say, hey, get through the emotion, then it's a ball game. The first three or four minutes, it's pure emotion, then it's a ball game, settle down and play. What did it for you? First shot, first bucket? Oh, I don't know. Game starting. First one that goes in. <laughs> yeah. Game getting started, tip off. Yeah, that's the best feeling is when the ball gets up in the air. Well, that's when the, the game gets into the players' hands. You feel like you can do something about it. Missouri strong defensively again. And Kelly Thames covering the third shot. Wouldn't fall. Look at Hass. Battle down inside. Scrambling to get something up and blocked. And taken right back up and stuck by Paul Pierce. Kansas stays with the play. Missouri couldn't pick up the basketball. Pierce knows how to finish. First lead for the Jayhawks at 9-7. to seven. The lob to Simeon Haley. He's got the double team, and he's fouled. Jock Vaughn in front. Scott Pollard behind. Vaughn was reaching, and if they got Jock Vaughn, that is his second foul. No. Looked like Scott Pollard. They got Pollard as his second foul. So timeout here. We have 15-36. Left in first half now. Let's go now to a message from your hometown Phillips 66 station where you find good things for cars and the people who drive them. Imagine winning free gasoline for one year, two years, five years. Where would you go first? How about Kansas City in March for the final Phillips 66 Big A basketball tournament? Register to win in the Phillips 66 Gasoline Odyssey sweepstakes. If you're the grand prize winner, you'll win free Phillips 66 gasoline to the year 2001. Plus, we'll fly you and a friend to KC for all the Big A tournament hoop action. It's the Phillips 66 Gasoline Odyssey sweepstakes. Sign up today at participating Phillips 66 stations. Silver Bullet, it's shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Some people are doing more business than ever on Fridays. The Denver deal doable, Donnie? Good. Help your business do more business with Sprint's amazing offer. For one full year, Fridays are free. No, I'll call you back. It's Friday. Every long-distance call you make on Fridays is free. The rest of the week, you get Sprint's great low-flat rate. Okay, Sue, I'll call you next Friday. Call now. 1-800-598-5000. Don't miss another free Friday. Only from Sprint Business. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> a sentiment here in Columbia. Hey, KU, a vanity plate. Well, there's probably the sequel to that is over in Lawrence, Kansas somewhere. Uh, they'll think of everything. I'm sure there's a, you know, you meet in Kansas City and a lot of Missouri alumni and Kansas alumni. And, oh, it's just a great rivalry, Fred, a great ball game. What is more fun than a great collegiate rivalry? Sutherland. Julia Winfield. Southern looking in at Sammy Haley down inside. Now Thames from the top of the circle off the heel of the rim. Big Greenfield down at Green down in there by Julian Winfield, and that's his game. Well, Winfield's been a different player at home than he's been on the road. Averages nearly 10 at home and only a few points on the road. His game is a 10 to 12 feet. He gets a lot of offensive rim. What a pass. Foul count on the side on Simeon Haley, or Sammy Haley, rather, his first. We talked about Winfield. He will attack. You need to put a body on him because he will attack the glass. Not very big at 6'4". When he gets the basketball, doesn't shoot the ball extremely well outside. But if he gets into 10 to 12 feet, he's a pretty dangerous player. Not every practice you've ever been in, toward the end of a practice, an assistant coach will take you through the scouting report and tell you what you have to do to a guy. And I'll bet you that every one of those says with Julian Winfield, don't let him do that. Put a body on him. That's like when I was in the NBA when you are going to play against Dennis Rodman. They would say they'd spend about 20 minutes on everybody. Block off Rodman. You still sometimes can't get it done. The Jay Williams second free throw good, and the Jayhawks are in front. Kansas full court pressure. And now they back it off. They haven't shown that zone trap they run as much 
this year as they usually have in years past, it seems. And they'd like to surprise you on it. It's so important when you play against Kansas to have a point guard that recognizes things and then can to his teammates. What a pass back here. Gregory Morris being a one out right there. Kelly Thames got the bucket. Henry Moore looked like he was in trouble, and Thames really helped him with a strong cut to the bucket. 11-10 Mizzou, and a good start to a ball game. Look, French working low. Mismatch inside again. Thames and the French. The French has about three or four inches. Kendrick Moore needs to play well today, he needs to play big. He picks up his dribble, is in trouble. Nice back door by Thames. The French got caught looking the wrong way. On the other end, Here's the three or four inch matchup problem. Thames can stand there. The French just raises up to shoot it. Thames leans in on him that they're going to call that foul. Rafe LaFrance, 6'11 sophomore from Monona, Iowa, looking for his first points of the game. He's leading the Jayhawks in scoring and rebounding at 14 points and nine rebounds a game. Has a sister lives here in Columbia. School teacher, great school teacher here in Columbia. Probably makes it hard for her to. <laughs> wear, uh, wear blue as uh, she goes to teach on Friday before this game. He is an outstanding player. Yes, he is. Jayhawks get the long rebound back. That won't make Norton very happy. Vaughn is so tough with the dribble that Sutherland has to give him room and allows Kansas to get their offense started so close to the basket. Well, here's the miss. And down inside, it is Williams with the rebound. And it's out of bounds to Missouri. Well, right now, Kansas with five offensive rebounds, Missouri with one. Winfield, Kansas is getting a lot more shots at the basket. Well, Missouri has been a Jekyll and Hyde. They're 12-0 at home, 2-8 and eight on the road. Defensively, at home, they're only giving up 68 points a game. On the road, they're giving up 87. Yeah, it's really been surprising. The North Stewart hasn't found the answer on the road, especially. But at home, you know, they come out and uh, the fans ignite them, and they've played much better. Oh, is that tough? <laughs> <laughs> When he can bring it down and jump up and shoot it, you are now as a defender in no man's land. Three-point goal for Jacques Vaughn. Continue that home road talk. Tigers shooting 53% at home, 43% on the road. And now they're having trouble shooting at home, and the ball will be out of bounds to Kansas again. Well, when you're defending a quick point guard, you have to give him some room. But when he can stop, pull up, and jump shoot it, and makes him. Vaughn's already backing up. He knows that's in. Now, as a defender, you're thinking, okay, I've got to get a little closer, but I don't want him going by. Makes it much more difficult. Roy Williams says he's become the best three-point shooter, and you look at the numbers, he's shooting 47% from three-point range, right behind Jason Sutherland. He makes it away. Got Kendrick Moore, and he's got Winfield. There's no doubt that that was going to be a stop. Well, Moore makes the play. Great hands on Vaughn's pass. He clears himself to make the lead pass with easy basket. How good is this game? That's the sixth tie, and we're 13 to 13. That was a little bit too easy for Norm Stewart's liking as Billy Thomas simply picked up the rebound and another offensive board for the Jayhawks. Well, two Tigers fighting for the basketball didn't communicate, and that's sometimes what happens when you're aggressive to the ball. Gary Grimm. Well, they leave Thames all alone in the circle, and it's going to drop. He got the roll. Kelly Thames has six, and we're tied again for the seventh time at 15 all. Jacques Fon, there's a fifth snow. Very grim with a rebound. Well, almost good. Well, you know, Vaughn gets the ball back up on top of the defense to quickly. Now, Mizzou looking for the lead. 12-14 left in the first half. Thames. One of the things Kansas likes to do is get you further away from the basket by their defense. Missouri doing a nice job with their spacing. They have plenty of lanes to drive the ball on, allowing themselves to drive, pitch it out like that for shots. Thames, Kendrick Moore over the French short. Thames battling, trying to save it. Can't. He winds up in the crowd, but it's a friendly crowd for him down there. 11.54 left in the first half. We've got a ball game. We've had seven ties. We're tied at 15 right now, and we'll be right back after this message from Southwest Airlines. Buying the low fare airline is just plain smart. 1996 will be an election year, which means promises to lower prices, raise employment, and get this country flying high again. Funny sounds like every year at Southwest Airlines, except that this year we turn 25. 
1996 will be a big year for sports, which means lots of quick turns, lots of short flights, and lots of celebrating. Funny? Sounds like every year at Southwest Airlines. Except that this year, we turn 25. Here's another clever idea from Plymouth. In the new Plymouth Grand Voyager, a seat is not only a seat, it's a table and a cup holder. It can come with a drawer, and one seat can convert into two reclining child safety seats. Overall, the Plymouth Grand Voyager seats are the best minivan seats on wheels. In fact, they're the only minivan seats on wheels. Clever idea. Plymouth Grand Voyager. It simply slides, folds, protects, unfolds, rolls, and drives better. Our drive through will have two windows. Why two? We take their money in the first window. If the order is wrong, who cares? We've already got their money. Oh, I like it! At Sonic, we care about food, not windows. Like cherry limeades, cheese tater tots, or our made-to-order Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe. Your choice right now, just 99 cents. So break away from the ordinary and drive into something different. Sonic, drive it for a change. All of the Big 8 teams in action on this Saturday afternoon. Other games going on. UMKC leads Colorado 6-2 and Mississippi State over Oklahoma 16-3 early. Time now for a Coors Light Silver Bullet update. Let's update something that was a big surprise in the Big East. Not a surprise the way John Wallace plays. He's one of the best in the country. Gets the steal, takes it the distance for the dunk. He had 25 points leading the way for the Orange. They win at home big, 84-85-64. Back to Fred and John. Thank you, John Sanders. Much different kind of game here. We've had seven ties, and we're not at a 15 right now. This game made up quickly. Sutherland knocked down a three to put Missouri in front. Jared has answered, and they have just been nose-to-nose -nose so far. It's been a tough battle. Both teams are playing man-to-man -man defense. Billy Thomas is a shooter for Kansas, and Pearson is in it. can also shoot the basketball. Jack Klein pulled up and shot it again. They had a little trouble throwing that ball, but Simeon finally came up with it. For Missouri, Winfield runs a point. A loose can shoot it. Sutherland will look for his shot. With the lineup now for Missouri, and Sutherland tried to hit Graham and threw it away. And the Jayhawks move it up. Sutherland picks up Vaughn. John Pearson drops it down inside. And the leader by T.J. Pugh is good. Scott Pollard on the pitch with two fouls. Hasn't scored in this ball game. And Pugh, the freshman from Nebraska, comes off the bench. It's Kansas by two again, 10-40 left in the first half, and the whistle blowing down under the basket, and they caught Gary Grimm on a hold that time. First on Grimm. Motion, motion offense by the Tigers. Here's Grimm going to set a back pick. That caught Lean a little bit. You want to step, slide, keep your elbows in, and catch him solid. If you miss him, you have to miss him. Once you start leaning, put your elbow out a little bit, they're going to call that. Norm Stewart objecting to the call. Both coaches have been very quiet as far as the officials are concerned so far in this game. Now Kansas with a two-point lead in the basketball. Vaughn drops it inside and Potter had it sacked away by Simeon here. Seventeen fifteen, Kansas, ten twenty-three left in first half play. John Pearson Pollard that time kind of of the lob, and it wasn't there, really. Pollard offensively so good on the block. Right hand, left hand can do a lot of things with the basketball. You know, he really wanted the ball down in there that time, and they got it to him, and he got the bucket. His first. And you can't allow him that kind of position. Once he gets it, he's one of the best in the country at finishing a play. Kansas by four, biggest lead of the game, and a loose is fouled by Billy Thomas. Pollard want the ball here and then do something with it. And look how low he is. Now, Simeon Haley can rely on his seven feet statue by getting into the shot line. Again, Pollard is just too good. That is too easy. I think he just gets better and better. Boy, he is a passing player in there. He's strong physically. What you always like to see is which players improve over the summertime, because that's where you make yourself a basketball player. And Scott Pollard again comes back every year with a something more in his arsenal. He just kind of can go left hand, right hand. He can do some things inside. Danny Alouche. 
Hughes made a good point about the summertime. Young kids watching this game, I hope they pay attention to what you're saying. They're in practice, how important practice really is. You win games in practice, don't you? Well, you do. Practice time during a season in any level is more team-oriented, unless you stay after practice work on your own game. The summertime is when an individual can work on a lot of things. But during the season, even in this college level, the coach is more busy with two hours of teamwork and team practice. Kansas caught on a foul down inside. They got T.J. Few that time. His first team fouls down. Six on Kansas, three on Missouri. Scott Pollard playing with two. Nobody else here. Missouri with the, the matchup. Vaughn is still guarding Sutherland, though Kendrick Moore will handle the point position. Moore kind of forced that shot. Now he wants another one. And the ball knocked out of there, and it comes back to Kansas. Good quick hands by Billy Thomas down low. Jared Hass trying to get back in, and so is Paul Pierce for Kansas. Thomas out. And Pierce. We know Billy Thomas is a three-point shooter. Watch how quick the hands are. Off of Moore, off the knee, out of bounds, Kansas basketball. It worked. That's a dangerous play to try to make. It is, it is dangerous. You're hoping the official's in front of you, then you're fine. If the official is behind you and they see you swing, that's the whistle. You saw Roy Williams have this rebound. Well, for six straight years, his teams have won 25 or more. Now that's outstanding. How good is Norm Stewart then? I think that was 21 wins for the last 24 years. Newell here. There's a lot of wins in this building. DJ Q. Well, I'll tell you, this kid is probably a lot better than most people thought. Even maybe the Kansas coaches when they recruited him. That time, Pew and Hash were there to try to stop the drive. And the foul was called. How about the aggressive play by Jason Sutherland? Get the ball on top of the defense until they stop you. Sutherland takes the basketball right to the rim. 14 of 14 from the free throw line against Nebraska. Shoots nearly 90%, 89% from the free throw line. He will attack the glass just to see if he can get to the foul line. It's a one and one. Today's game being brought to you by Southwest Airlines with low fares on every seat of every flight, everywhere it flies. Flying the low fare airline is just plain smart. Sutherland, leading free three shooter in the conference. That's a string of 33 in a row on Missouri record. John, you did hold the record of 28 in a row. Well, I'm glad he just wiped out the books for good. <laughs> Uh, he, he has been terrific from the free throw line. And again, he's another kid you look at last year. He didn't really think he was much of a scorer. This year he comes in, shoots the ball exceptionally well. It's the summer work he put in. Alvin Rayford now with the point. Holland with the miss with the left hand down inside. And Missouri up looking for the tie again. Winfield for Walter. Rolling down inside they go. And Simeon Haley leaves and walks. And the Jayhawks get it back leading by two. The Prince back in for Kansas. Pugh will come out. You get positioned down low, you have to finish the play. I don't know if Pollard quite sure gathered himself strong enough to go up with some strength. And Haley, one of the problems both Haley brothers have is moving their feet a little too often. That time the shuffle they call travel. And the ball stripped and taken away by Jason Sutherland. Quinn Hughes had 21 shots. Missouri only 11 at this juncture of the ball game. But it's just a two-point lead to Kansas. Winfield at the point again. Baines to the bucket. And tough defense inside for Kansas. LaFrance comes down with it. Rayford's going to push it. Pass. And it's knocked away in there by Simeon Haley and out of bounds to Kansas under the own basket. Well, both teams do a nice job getting back defensively because Missouri will push the ball and Kansas will push the ball, try to make the easy basket. With Walter trying to duel LaFrance with a rebound, and that's a mismatch, and LaFrance gets the stick back for his third point. Kansas up four. Sutherland. Step at three. His second play of the ball game. He has eight points, and it's a one-point lead to Kansas. Play Rayford, immediate penetration from LaFrance to Rayford. Back inside LaFrance, inside out, and the two-man game doesn't pay off that time. Simeon Halo hands it to Walker, and the Tigers look for the lead now. 7.35 left in the first half of a good basketball game. Look at Rayford get after Walker out there. And Sutherland will continue to move without the basketball because he feels it. Simeon with the lead, no. Pollard with the rebound. 
A Jay size paying off inside. The Prince turned down a three. Pierce inside to Pollard. And a foul call on Simeon Hill. Well, Kansas will run the secondary break, they like to call it. They don't have something immediately. They swing the basketball. That allows Pollard to come across, position himself deep inside the lane. And you have to know what's coming. You have to beat him across. Pollard locks himself already in there. When the ball comes in, he's in such good position. A lot of pushing and shoving. Haley's leaning a bit with a lower body, and Ed Hightower will call it from the other side. Ronnie Harge now replaces Simeon Haley, sits down with a foul. Ryan Robertson is on the floor for Kansas. One man from St. Charles, Missouri, down near St. Louis, making his first appearance in the game. Scott Pollard's free throw is good. He has three points, a 58% free throw shooter. Jayhawks by two. You know, we, we talked about this game, and what's funny is Robertson and Chip Walter playing summer league together, and they played Corey Tate, Winfield, and Thames. And Billy Thomas was a teammate with Kendrick Moore in the Olympic Festival. So, I mean, the players are players. I mean, they kind of enjoy the game. The fans, they go nuts about it. They all know one another. Time out here. We'll return after this message from the performance company. Phillips 66. All across the heartland, in big cities and small towns, and all the miles in between, we're there. In the best of times and the worst of times, a helping hand along your way. A company dedicated to helping you get the most out of your car, as well as your life. For all the miles to come, Phillips 66, the performance company. Down there, they call it Rodeo. Up here, we just know it as Rodeo. High Country Barley, Rocky Mountain Water, brewed a mile high. Original Coors in the yellow can. There's nothing like the beer from up here. You'll get it back when you get one of these, rookie. A reminder to stay with us for the Bud Light Halftime Report, an update from Colorado. The Buffs have come back to take a 21-14 lead over UMKC. And now the story from Norman, Oklahoma, this afternoon. Quick start for Mississippi State. The alley-oop to Dante Jones. He slams it home. Mississippi State has the early lead, 21-9. to Let's take it back to where Fred and John, I know, are having fun, boys. Well, we really are, John Sanders, and Oklahoma needs a rally down there. The Big 8 needs that win over Mississippi State today. Kansas in a 1-3-1 zone, and they make the pass. It's similar to a 2-3, but they will challenge. With Pollard inside big, and the Franks in the back of the zone, that makes him awfully tall inside. Monty Harge with a tough catch down inside, and the shot good. Boy, Monty Harge showed us some strength that time. Well, Monty is only 6'11", about 330 pounds. When he gets his uh, hands on that basketball, not many people knock it away. Lewis Stewart said in practice last night, John, when they get in this, I want to see a layup. Well, he got very close to one right there. And now a whistle blowing and a foul down inside on Monty Harge. Monty, Monty Hard's a red shirt freshman. He catches the basketball well. He turns and faces pretty strong. You wouldn't really want to get this way too much. But he finishes it with a nice little touch. Kansas sent two big men over in that time to try to deflect that pass, and he made a tough catch. And they uh, bounced off him a little bit. Yeah, we, we have seen that this year. Fame's got a hand on it, but the friend's able to save it. One point lead, Kansas, 6-14 with an half. Ryan Robertson to Pollard. Robertson getting the friendly boos from, from an in-state player that went to Kansas to go to school, so they'll boo him when he catches the basketball. Second foul on Harge. So we got two quick ones since coming into the ball game, and he's coming right back out. Now Derry Grimm will replace him. Is it Thames? Looks 
check. For the Prince, free throw good. It was the second on Kelly Thames. They did not get hard. She and Thames were both there, and they caught it on Kelly Thames. So Thames sits down with two fouls. Kansas by three again as LaFrance knocks down both free throws, and he has five points today. And full court pressure after the made free throw. The ball rolls around, allows Kansas to get set at every position defensively. Winfield trying to get it inbounds. Not the easiest thing on earth to do, even though it may seem like it. And now they're going to break it. Sutherland has Robertson right behind him. Saves the ball. Winfield to the bucket. And some trouble down there finds Hart. Jock Vaughn not leaving Sutherland for one minute. Could have gone and helped out inside, but stayed with Jason all the way. You see Roy Williams in the background playing defense. Hart. Shot wouldn't fall. And the Prince takes it away for Kansas. Jayhawks up three with the ball. What a pass. With a power balance. Now Pierce wide open. Grimm tipped it and picked off by LaFrance, who keeps his dribble as he hits the deck. Lawrence Stewart said his foot was out of that. Well, well, this is well, this is what we expect. Pierce is wide open for three, and that one will go. Vaughn hits the deck. How many bodies is that? This is something else. From the baseline to the mid-court line, there were people on the floor. I just caught the Sutherland Vaughn out of the corner of my eye. I don't know if Jason put a body on him or not. Now Scott Pollard draws his third foul. Scott Pollard's third personal foul comes with 524 left in the first half. And that's big as they have Pollard going over the back of Harge. And they're going to put Winfield on the free throw line. Three fouls on Scott Pollard. Scott Pollard and B.J. Williams are the only two Jayhawks to have fouled out of the game this year. Roy Williams uses all those players and rotates them all the time. Winfield at the line. The Tigers 6 for 6 as a team at the line, and Winfield makes it 7 for 7. He's a 64% shooter, and he has five points today. He's only had double figure scoring in three of his last 16 games. But it's not always his points to tell you how well he's played. Well, known for, as a defensive player, all big A defensive team the last two years. This year, he's played point guard, shooting guard, small four. He's tried to do anything that can help this ball club. Oh, 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 my goodness. Ray for French dropped an easy one. Vaughn put it right on the money. P.J. Williams is able to scrape off Sutherland and let Vaughn get past him and get that penetration. But then the dish not handled. Mizzou down one with the ball. 5-0-8 left in the first half. And the crowd here in turn starting to rise to their feet, wanting to get after it. Sammy Haley fouled as the ball came down inside. They are really calling him close down inside right now. Well, Kansas is allowing Missouri to catch the basketball inside, and then that may be by design because the Haley brothers have not finished a lot of plays. But what's happening, once they catch it and the lower bodies are pushed, the referees this afternoon are calling that a foul. First foul on Ray LaFrance. Sammy Haley. And that's off, Whitten Fall, LaFrance with the rebound. Jack Brown. And then suddenly. that's... Well, Doug was trying to kick him. He, didn't. he does that a lot. He just, for some reason, I think he's just shifting gear. Yeah. Some reason they'll just raise a leg in there. Right? And a foul down inside. Boy, North no Stewart not happy. When Kansas catches the ball inside, the Tigers are collapsing. They're trying to make Pollard or LaFrance kick it out. This time it's LaFrance who catches. Watch the attraction. The Tigers are all around in four bodies. He puts it on the floor, and then Grimm comes over. Grimm thinks he has all ball. Norm Stewart not happy. But you can see what the idea of the Tigers is. Let's not get beat inside. Let's make them beat us over the top. Great for Prince. With six points and six rebounds so far. I don't know that Juan makes when he kind of kicks that foot up. Michael Evans of Kansas State used to do that. It's just kind of a pumped up and getting going kind of a move here. The Grimm is out with those two fouls. Pass returns for Kansas. Ryan Robinson. kind of a sad reaction. Well, it's a, a smile by Roy Williams and Ryan Robertson, outstanding young man. Last time here, he won a state high school championship in this building. But you know what, Fred? It's expected. Yeah, it is. Just, <laughs> that's how it is. We saw Rachel first first game back in that's Iowa right. last year in Ames in the same reaction. And Hoiberg wasn't happy when the, with the Iowa State fans, but you know what? He didn't say it until after the game. Yeah. <laughs> he did say stop it early on. They're going to beat the press. Kendrick Moore upset it to Haley. He didn't catch it clean and now needs to get rid of it and does. 
Ben McLaurin made a pretty good pass to him, and they simply didn't catch it. And when you watch, Jock Vaughn just did not leave Sutherland for a second, even when everybody else was going. Sutherland's trying to pop out, free himself off. Vaughn's right with him. The two handlers are in there. The ball was lobbed in between them, and they couldn't handle it. Now a 20-second timeout. Norm Stewart saying there had to be a foul in there somewhere. The official saying no. Haley's have really had some problems catching the ball in all honesty. There's Norm trying to get his ball club back on track. A little bit of hold inside there for a little bit. That might have been the foul he was looking for right there. A lot of pushing and shoving. Watch the hand. There's the grab from that angle. The, the tough part there is both Haley's are given neither one enough space to operate. And if you're going to they're going to be fronted, the other one has to know that and stay out of the way in case there's a lot. Eight fouls on Kansas, seven on Missouri. Right now they got nine on Kansas, seven on Missouri so far today. 4.24 left in the first half. Been a good game. Five points has been the biggest lead. Kansas up three with the basketball right now. And again, B.J. Williams trying to scrape off Sutherland to give Vaughn a little working room, and Sutherland catches up. Shot. First option to go inside to their big people. Good defense. Tough shot in the French won't fall. And Simeon Haley had it was foul. The French will pick up his second personal. Outstanding defense by Sammy Haley this time. Again, when you're 6'11, make them catch it about a foot further out than they want to. LaFrance backs and shoots a fadeaway. Challenge a shot, nearly block the shot, and then it gets a rebound. He's good, but let me ask you a question. If you're Norm Stewart, do you let him take that shot all day? That's a tough shot. It's a tough shot. As long as you know, if you challenge that shot, you just want a position. If you allow him to catch it on the block, it's too easy. Three feet outside the block, that's a little bit out of range. He can still hit it. Just challenge it every time. Foul trouble for Kansas coming. Pollard has three. LaFrance and has two each. Today's Big A conference game is a copyrighted telecast of Creative Sports Incorporated. And any use, rebroadcast, or other transmission of any or all of this game without the express prior written consent of Creative Sports is prohibited. And that one won't go either. Simeon Haley missed a pair of them. Kansas still up three. 3.56 left in the first half. Shot down for the Jayhawks. Sutherland trying to draw a charging foul. And didn't. And now, a walk on the baseline. Missouri gets it back with 3.49 to play. We'll take a break here in Hearns, 29-26, Kansas. We'll be right back. With four doors, tons of interior space, comfortably contoured seating, and a great stereo. The Plymouth Neon sedan is a huge kick for cruising. While the Plymouth Neon Espresso Coupe's 132 horsepower engine and fully independent suspension make it a real kick in the passing lane. Plymouth Neon Coupe. Or sedan. It's never middle of the road. $99.95 for starters, $12.7 nicely equipped. Coach, what do you think? Son, it's not what you look like or how big you are. It's what you've got deep down inside. You can't see it. It's hidden. But believe me, it's there. I made the team. No. <laughs> not a chance. I was talking about this pizza. The new triple-decker pizza from Pizza Hut, hidden inside two thin crusts, is a six-cheese blend for a huge cheese taste. You know, son, I do need another guard. Night, kid. If you're just rolling out of bed, do not look outside. The new Jeep Grand Cherokee Laredo offers an available V8 and full-time four-wheel drive. Out the way, buses are running behind. Anti-lock disc brakes and dual airbags. Getting through. Plus package values of up to $1,000. All in all, it's a great day. Making the new Jeep Grand Cherokee greatly underappreciated by school kids everywhere. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. Georgia Tech and North Carolina in overtime. The ball bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Good hustle. And finally, Eddie Elsima gets the basket for Georgia Tech. They hang in there and win in overtime at Carolina. 92-83. to 83. Colorado has a big lead, and Mississippi State is still well ahead of Oklahoma. Fred? 
All right, thank you, John Sanders. And we have 29-26 Kansas here. Missouri a ball. 339 to play. How would you like to be trying to figure out Georgia Tech this year? <laughs> Tough schedule early. They've played well in the ACC. Kansas zone defense. Sutherland gets right between them. That's a tough shot. That's a nice shot. That's a hard shot to knock down. And Jason Sutherland now has 10. 29-28. Kansas as Vaughn penetrates. And another whistle. And another foul's been called. And we're getting a lot of fouls called. Let's take a look now at our Sonic Drive-In of the game, brought to you by Sonic Drive-Ins, who invites you to drive in for a change. When you play against his own defense, you have to be aggressive and attack in between the seams. And if you get in between, it creates opportunities for your teammate. This time, what Sutherland does is creates an opportunity for himself. Wide open gap in the middle. Watch him go between Hass and Vaughn, gets himself in there. That's a tough little shot, folks. This kid has been terrific in big A play, shooting the basketball. Jock Vaughn, free throw good. He has six points so far in this game. The 6'1 junior from Pasadena. John Muir High School. This is his 86th consecutive start for Kansas here today. Has played well against the Tigers in the past ball game. Takes a little while to shoot a free throw, doesn't it? <laughs> I've seen him on the road at times. Fans like to count. Yeah. <laughs> See if he gets it off. Sutherland. Vaughn caught up to it. Congratulations to Kansas track standout Lisa Bryn. Ryan has won four consecutive weight throw competitions. Haley, nice oh, shot. Wow. Wow. Woo. Oh my goodness. Oh. B.J. Williams rejected that thing. And Sammy Haley turned and smiled at him and said something to it. Well, Williams is a high jumper, rebounder, shot blocker. Watch this one. Comes out of nowhere. Kendrick Moore caught it, had a three-point shot, turned it down. 16 on the shot clock for Missouri. Three minutes left in the first half. KU by three. The Jayhawks have had the lead for a while, but the biggest win in the game has been four. They said five earlier. It's been four. And now the ball knocked out of bounds. Down at the baseline. Kendrick Moore caught dribbling the basketball out. When you stand and dribble, a lot of things don't happen. You either have to move it on the pass or do something with the dribble, get it going. Five seconds left in the shot clock. Sutherland. Wants to shoot it, does, off balance, it won't fall. Rebound, for and saved by Julian Winfield. To Sutherland at the top of the circle, and on the left-handed hook. Oh, Whoa. Are you kidding me? That's tough. He's made two tough shots back-to-back, -back, and Mizzou back to win one. And the crowd on her feet and hers. Here's B.J. Williams. Oh, Pierce with a stick back. Winfield missed time to jump. Anytime the ball stays on her two or three bounces, you might be in trouble. Simeon Haley with the answer at the other end. His fourth point and another one-point lead for Kansas. And Vaughn foul, they call that foul on Sammy Haley, his second. You know, Jason Sutherland is known as a standing three-point shooter. He has added things to his game. How about the left-handed finger roll, the little scoop? And on the other end, B.J. Williams shoots this one. You can live with this if you're a Tiger fan. Let him shoot the ball all day long out there until he makes one. Winfield for the rebound. It stays on the rim too long. Pierce gets a gift. 19 foul on Mizzou. Kansas has been whistled for 10. Kansas 10 for 12 at the free throw line. Jock Vaughn 2 for 2 in the 7 point. Hawks by 1. And now 2. Two eleven left in the first half is what has been what has been a really good college basketball game here so far. Oh. And they had it lost it, but Mazur saves it. Didn't allow every time they've made a free throw, they've been full court pressure in our Kansas to get anything set that time. Desmond Ferguson, Winfield, by the Robin inside, stolen by Paul Pierce. He's got one ahead of him. What's Pierce gonna do with it? Three long ball. Williams with another offensive rebound for Kansas. They're just not blocking him off the boards. That is 11 offensive boards for Kansas in the first half, John. Well, it's surprising. Maybe Missouri's only two points behind. You let a team rebound 11 offensive. That one was knocked away by Kendrick Moore on the inside. Good hands. But you allow Kansas to continue to offensive rebound, Missouri's going to have a tough time. Yeah, you know, once in a while, but not like that. That's kind of inexcusable when you just let a guy come from the top of the circle and get one. 
That's actually 12. That was that one wasn't up on the stat board yet. A lot of times when you're home, you play so much on emotion, you forget to do little things. You then you can jump out of the gym, but you still have to check off, block off each man to secure rebounds. Missouri took it away from TJ Pugh, and Haley knocked it down. He calls a walk. Simeon Haley walked with a basketball. The basket doesn't count. And Roy Williams is going to spend a 20-second timeout and talk to his team now. defense by Missouri we have seen it all afternoon when the ball goes inside Missouri has just pounded it in there and defended it they wanted to pass it out top it was knocked out of there cleanly by Julian Winfield there have been 19 fouls called in the first half of this game when you start reaching in and digging like that when they're calling close you're kind of fortunate we've seen it happen twice and they were both good calls clean calls you know, a lot of times if you get close enough to the, the guy with the basketball if you're double team and get close enough so your hands aren't out there arms like reaching a long way if you get close enough you can get your hands in there referees can't see a lot of that kind of action and that's what you expect if you're a guy like Winfield get close enough to get to the basketball here that time trying to rub off Sutherland Sutherland staying with Vaughn as he went away from the screen here, back to what's the deck that's the play of foul call in the first time Penetration by Paul Pierce. He's outstanding off the dribble. Look at three Tigers, drops it off to two. Hards comes for the block, gets part of the basketball, but body, lower body, and then he finished kind of foul too hard there. P.J. Pugh has five points, six nine Frasier from Omaha's Creighton Prep. His dad, Tim, played at Creighton. You know, he's got to feel good to be healthy. He broke four bones in a year and a half. Second free throw, one foul. Missouri down three, a minute 14 left in the first half. Can't bring more to the pocket. Well, I tell you what, he saw some daylight and took it. Outstanding play, but he comes up limping. I'm not sure if it's an ankle. He looks like he's really ginger on his right foot. Paul Pierce trying to answer. Hugh has the rebound and lost it out of bounds. It'll be Kansas basketball. One point lead, Kansas right now. Here's Missouri on the break. Vaughn's calling out signals in the back, trying to make sure people are in the right position. Moore sees something he likes. He goes on Harge's side. Harge sets a pretty good body block. Kendrick Moore makes a good finish. B.J. Williams nearly blocks that shot, but he comes down and might have pulled a groin or something. He yeah. looks like he's holding there. What well, it looks like, and he has come out of the ball game right now. 54 seconds left in the first half. 28 on the shot clock for Kansas. Jayhawks with a one-point lead. Williams to Jacques Vaughn. 21 on the shot clock. 45 on the first half clock. Will Thomas for three. Well, he can shoot it from out there. Oh, we've seen him do it all year. There is uh, He doesn't have range. I mean, they, he doesn't have something. They say, well, that's his limit. He can back up as far as he wants to. And does it easily. Four-point lead. Jayhawks matching the biggest lead in the first half. 26 seconds left in that half. Winfield against Paul Pierce. About a one-second difference on the shot clock and the game clock, so Missouri looks like they're going to run it all the way down and try to get the last one of the right first half. 12 seconds left in the half. Winfield continues to work on Pierce, now gets help, and DJ Williams down in there, and the foul is called. As Winfield took it spinning into the lane, he draws the foul with a little less than six seconds left in the half. And shoot two. Winfield just kept the ball in his hands and pierced the right. Good little spin move here. A little bit collapsing defense by Kansas. Nice job by Pugh. Got there a little bit late. He wanted the charge. First foul on Paul Pierce. North Star gets Harge out of the ball game. Is that Winfield? Justin Sutherland talking to him. Winfield apparently a little shaken up before he goes to the free throw line. Both Haley's are in now. Monty Harge is out. Desmond Ferguson is in for Missouri. Along with Sutherland and Winfield, Kansas getting Paul Pierce out of the game. Billy Thomas, B.J. Williams, Rayford, Vaughn, and Hugh. And Kansas, two speed merchants. Vaughn can bring it up or Rayford. If Rayford has it, maybe Vaughn goes to one corner, Billy Thomas in the other. Those two can spot up and shoot threes. Winfield has seven. Scott Pollard's been on the bench with three fouls since 524 left in the half. If you're Missouri, get back defensively. Make Rayford finish the play. He may be able to finish it. North Stewart wants his guys out of the lane to get him all the way back. Not happy. Two-point ball game as Winfield knocks them both down. Five 
.8 seconds left in the half. Now Kansas sends everybody up to try to get the ball inbound. Simeon Haley defending the inbounds pass. They're going to make it as tough as they can for the third inbounds. Vaughn tried to get it on the run out, couldn't. And Rizzer can't catch up to it. It's out of bounds to Mizzou. No time off the clock. 5.8 seconds left in the half. And the Tigers could take the lead or get a tie here. They're down two. You know, the biggest part of the whole thing was Simeon Haley tipped the ball after the free throw. They tried to get in quickly. Simeon Haley tipped it out of bounds. That let Missouri establish their defense and get it set. Kansas couldn't get it in. Missouri has a chance to tie this basketball game up at halftime. Now the Haley's are out. Derry Grimm is back in with Kelly Thames for an offensive lineup. Watch Sutherland off Thames on the left side of that court for the jump shot in the corner. Winfield responsible for the inbounds pass. That's not as easy as it sounds. Thames puts it on the floor, pops the jumper, won't go, and Jacques Vaughn is just going to hold it and let the half come to an end. And a good half it has been as Kansas will take a two-point lead to the locker room at 38-36. So good first half here. 38-36, Kansas, our score at the break here in Columbia. Let's get you back to John in Studio 66. John Sanders. All right, Fred, a great first half. Very exciting basketball game, a two-point difference. We have a lot to show you on our Bud Light Halftime Report. We'll get started from Studio 66, so stay with us. Today's Big 8 basketball game is brought to you by Phillips 66, the performance company, makers of high-quality, super-clean gasoline and Trop Arctic premium motor oil by Chrysler Plymouth and your local Chrysler Plymouth dealers. By Shelter Insurance, celebrating its 50th year, Shelter Insurance will always be there for you. And by Sprint, the only long distance company that puts you in touch with the Big 8 Conference. We've weathered some of the worst storms, survived some of the most brutal punishment, dealt by the elements and the economy. We've helped millions of families throughout the heartland of America do the same. And together, we've come through stronger, more resilient than ever. For home, car, and life insurance, we're proud to be your shield of shelter. Shelter Insurance will always be there for you. The Big 8 Shopping Mall is the place for quality Big 8 apparel at great prices. This premium knit sports shirt is offered in combination with this top quality sports cap for one special price. The 100% cotton shirt has a generous athletic fit, and you can customize it with your favorite Big 8 school logo. The classic cap celebrates the rich tradition of the Big 8 Conference with this special commemorative logo. Show your Big 8 colors for only $49.95 by calling 1-800-871-BIG-8. Have your credit card ready and call now. 1-800-871-BIG-8. Coors Light, the silver bullet, is shipped cold to tap the clean taste of the Rockies. Tap the Rockies! drive-thru will have two windows. Why two? We take their money in the first window. If the order is wrong, who cares? We've already got their money. Oh, I like it! At Sonic, we care about food, not windows. Like cherry limeades, cheese tater tots, or our made-to-order Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe, your choice right now, just 99 cents. So break away from the ordinary and drive into something different. Sonic, driving for a change. No, you can't control the weather. But a Jimmy can. Seek a safe haven. Seek a Jimmy. Right now, get $600 in option package savings on any Jimmy. See your GMC truck pros today. It's halftime in Columbia at the Hearn Center, and today's halftime report is brought to you by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. John Sanders back again in Studio 66. 
Let's show you some one-sided games that we had earlier in the first half of our Big A doubleheader on the network. This is Eddie Sutton trying to get his Cowboys going. They're in unfamiliar territory, and their defense got them going. Adrian Peterson gets the slam off a turnover. Another turnover coming here. Jerome Lambert will get two of his 25 points off of that turnover. And still another steal. This is Andre Owens. He'll take it all the way against Kansas State. Wildcats struggled in the turnover department, and Oklahoma State wins big and easily at home. 83 to 60 was the final score. Now, the other game, Tim Floyd has his Cyclones on a roll. Let's watch the alley-oop that goes to Kelvin Cato. He had six points. And Lou leading Nebraska with 13. Nice bank shot on the break there, but it, the day belonged to Dedrick Willoughby. He had seven three-pointers. He had 29 in the game, a new career high. He just kept pumping them in. Dedrick Willoughby leading Iowa State to, yes, still another win there, six and two in Big 8 play, and the final was 74 to 59. Everybody in the Big 8 is busy. 43-19, that's the lead for Colorado against Missouri-Kansas City. They're playing that game in Boulder. Oklahoma coming back a bit. They were down big early to Mississippi State. Right now, the difference at halftime is 33 to 25. So the Sooners have gotten back by halftime. See if they can pick it up in the second half of that game and come back against a former top 25 team, Mississippi State. We have more scores, highlights to show you. Also, a look back at some Big 8 history when we come back with more from Studio 66. When the going is slow, innovation becomes the key to progress, and innovation is driven by education. During National Engineers Week, Phillips salutes Big 8 schools of engineering and their graduates whose innovation allows us to meet engineering challenges. After all, world-class engineering is what drives Phillips 66, the performance company. Sturdy rail-through construction and four-wheel specially modified double wishbone suspension. Five-passenger interior comfort for the whole family. Innovative and stylish cab forward design. All for a price that won't knock the wind out of you. Introducing the new Plymouth Breeze. Here's your chance to capture 89 years of passion and excitement with Big 8 Basketball celebrating a tradition. For just $14.99, this special video offer spotlights the league's greatest coaches. You will also see the Hardwood stars from Wayman Tisdale to Wilt Chamberlain to Bryant Reeves. You don't want to miss the buzzer beaters and memorable moments that have made the Big 8 a tradition worth celebrating. Call 1-800-728-2065 or stop by participating Phillips 66 locations for your copy today. When you fly the low fare airline, you can bring your spouse along for free because friends fly free on Southwest Airlines. Or you can even take your partner, Jack, anywhere we fly. Just make round trip reservations and buy your ticket at Southwest Low, unrestricted full fare, and a friend flies with you free. And there's only one day advance purchase. Hey, you can even bring along your boss. Friends fly free on Southwest, the low fare airline college basketball. There used to be some on. That was okay. Then there was more. For a while, that seemed like plenty. But wouldn't it be cool if you could see more of the games you wanted? Your school's games. Great games in different time zones. Games with great new players. And hundreds of games you can't see anywhere else. Well, the ball's in your court. You just gotta contact your local cable operator or direct TV, and they'll hook you up to ESPN full court. It's your season subscription to the NCAA. Still a two-point lead at halftime for the University of Kansas over the University of Missouri. And, of course, both of these schools have been involved in a lot of Big 8 history. This is the 38th and final year of Big 8 play. And let's look back at one special moment with our Sprint Big 8 moment in history. The 1993-94 season saw the Missouri Tigers perform one of the greatest turnarounds in the history of the Big 8. They finished next to last in the conference in 1993, but returned the following year to go undefeated in conference play. But that was a great team, great coaching job of Norm, and uh, I'll be very surprised if anybody uh, ever goes undefeated again. That was a very unique ball club. I think everybody should at one time, if they coach, uh, have that privilege of being around a group of youngsters that might not be quite as talented as some other teams that you may have had, or it might be, not be as talented as the teams in the league, but for some reason they have what we call chemistry, or they have the ability to win, and that was truly the way that ball club was. They were greater than the sum of the parts. And Norm Stewart, of course, trying to make sure that Kansas does not match that by going undefeated in 1996. 
Time now for the long John Silver's Big 8 catch, and there he is, the sophomore forward center, Rafe LaFriends. What a great job he has done for the University of Kansas. He is our long John Silver's Big 8 catch. We have more scores to bring you as we continue here from Studio 66 after a message from our good friends at Phillips 66. Think of all the places you could go if you won free gasoline for one year, two years. How about five years? Register to win in the Phillips 66 Gasoline Odyssey Sweepstakes. If you're the grand prize winner, you'll win free Phillips 66 gasoline to the year 2001. Plus, we'll fly you and a friend to Kansas City for the final Phillips 66 Big 8 Basketball Tournament. It's the Phillips 66 Gasoline Odyssey Sweepstakes. Sign up today at participating Phillips 66 stations. Dad? Yeah? There's, uh, something I want to tell you. What is it, son? Well, Dad, you're my dad. And I love you, man. You're not getting my Bud Light, Johnny. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Ray, forget it, Johnny. Welcome to the Big 8 Shopping Mall, the convenient way to shop at home for quality Big 8 merchandise. This classic denim baseball jacket will be a hit for any Big 8 sports fan. It features a 100% cotton denim body, twill sleeves, and a warm cotton lining. The Big 8 commemorative logo is on one sleeve, and we'll place the logo of your favorite Big 8 school on the front of the jacket. To order this exclusive limited edition jacket for only $79.95, have your credit card ready and call now. 1-800-871-BIG-8. That's 1-800-871-BIG-8. Some people are doing more business than ever on Fridays. A Denver deal doable, Donnie? Good. Help your business do more business with Sprint's amazing offer. For one full year, Fridays are free. No, I'll call you back. It's Friday. Every long-distance call you make on Fridays is free. The rest of the week, you get Sprint's great low flat rate. Okay, so I'll call you next Friday. Call now, 1-800-598-5000. Don't miss another free Friday, only from Sprint Business. Halftime score, 38-36. We'll send you back to the Hearn Center in Columbia for second half action in just a moment. We continue now from Studio 66 with an update of some other scores on a very busy Saturday of college basketball. A huge win for Syracuse at home against Georgetown. And in overtime, Tech wins at North Carolina this afternoon. Also today, Villanova over Rutgers. The number six Wildcats keep it going there. A three-point win for Tech. They really had to scrap to beat A&M. Virginia Tech, a win uh, against Xavier on the road. Good for the Hokies, ranked number 11. And Purdue holding off Michigan 69-64 to is the final there. A reminder about next week, right here from Studio 66, we'll start with Oklahoma and Colorado at 1230, followed by Kansas and Iowa State. Should be a terrific doubleheader next Saturday. We hope you'll be here with us. I'll be here with updates in the second half. When we come back, we'll return to Columbia. Fred and John will have highlights and stats right after this. Today's Big 8 basketball game is brought to you by Phillips 66, the performance company, makers of high-quality, super-clean gasoline and the top Artist premium motor oil. By Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. By Long John Silver's, America's place to go for amazing shrimp and fish. And by Pizza Hut, home of the all-new triple-decker pizza. Have one delivered today. These days, you're working harder than ever. Yeah! You need a truck that does, too. Introducing the all-new 1997 Ford F-150 with a tough new suspension. Don't move. A standard new third door to make life a lot easier. A stronger new frame. I'm driving. And a new Triton V8 with even more torque and horsepower. The all-new Ford F-150. Better get to the Grand Canyon before we do. <laughs> Our drive-thru will have two windows. Why two? 
We take their money at the first window. If the order is wrong, who cares? We've already got their money. Oh, I like it! At Sonic, we care about food, not windows. Like cherry limeades, cheese tater tots, or our made-to-order Junior Cheeseburger Deluxe. Your choice right now, just 99 cents. So break away from the ordinary and drive into something different. Sonic, drive it for a change. My daughter was ready for college, my truck died, and I really needed a vacation, but where was the money going to come from? So I called Capital Federal about a home equity loan. Now I can help pay for Lisa's college. I got a new truck, and I'm finally going fishing. An Execuline home equity loan can provide the money to pay for what's important to you, all with tax-deductible interest. Capital Federal Savings, the most trusted name for over 100 years. Good ball game here in Columbia. Kansas up two at halftime. The biggest lead has been four. Now let's take a look now at the Shelter Insurance first half highlights. Both ball clubs have had some. I'll promise you that. Missouri doing a nice job, and one of the things you have to do against Kansas is recognize defenses. And Kendrick Moore gets the Tigers in a zone offense because of the defense. Sutherland penetrates inside a hoop, one of his buckets on the way to 12 points in the first half. On the Kansas side, they put the ball in down low. They'll move the basketball. They want to find the inside position. This time, Pollard gets it. Only hit one of three inside. Only has four points. Needs to finish more, but he had three fouls sat out the last seven minutes. Celebrating his 50th year for your life, home, car, farmer business, shelter insurance. We'll always be there for you. Ten Sun Bolt, Missouri has done what a lot of teams have done. They played with Kansas for a half. Now, can they do it for a whole ball game? Well, well you, have, you have to keep it up. You see the shooting. Missouri shooting awfully well. Free throws about the even. Three points. Both teams at two. The rebounding has really been the big difference. Kansas, with 13 offensive rebounds, they need to capitalize and finish some of those plays. They could extend this lead. Turnover's about the same, but Kansas makes great runs, especially second half of ball games. Today's halftime stats are brought to you by Southwest Airlines. The low fare airline is just plain smart. Well, you mentioned the run thing. They've done it to everybody. At some point, they're going to hit you with one. This is how the scoring looks. Von LaFrench, seven, Pierce, six. Jason Sutherland, big first half with a dozen. Winfield, eight, Thames, six. That Sutherland scoring is a good sign for Missouri in the losses for Missouri this year. Jason Sutherland in seven of those games averaged only nine points a game. He's averaged 17 a game in their victories so far this year, and they're getting a big game out of him so far. Shoots great in the Hearn Center, over 54% from the field goals and three-point line. Doesn't shoot as well on the road, but he's having a good start so far. Jay Hawks with the lead in the basketball to start the second half. Up 38-36, Paul Pierce. It's Missouri again, man-to-man -man defense. Kansas will try to look inside. Ron to Pierce, looking down inside at Rafe LaFrance, working against Simeon Haley, and the shot won't go, and he's fouled. And a foul immediately within 20 seconds of the second half. Let's take a look at now at four keys to the second half of this game, John. Well, as we said, you have to go inside if you can. Just take it to the hole, see if you can get some fouls, and they're going to have to guard Jason Sutherland. Sutherland with 12. He really leads what Missouri does. On the Missouri side, you have to rebound, or you're going to lose big. And again, watch the run. Last time out, Kansas put on a 15 to nothing run against Iowa State. They went 18 and four against Nebraska. They put a 19 to two run against Oklahoma State. They are known for it. They're deep and they're awfully good. Well, we mentioned the start of the game. They are going to play 40 minutes. The question is, how are you going to play for 40? If you don't play solid 40, that run will happen. Talking to the Missouri staff, they said, you know, we feel we can play and do well and do the things that we have to contain the second half run, and everybody talks about it. Seven different players scored for Missouri in the first half. I think one of the things we saw in the first half, Missouri was able to break down the Kansas defense a little bit. Normally when you watch Kansas, they force the opposition so far out on the defensive end of the stop. The Southerns have it right into the tall timber and got to knock right back out of there. Jayhawks get it up to Hass and LaFrance on the run. I think Missouri got caught sleeping a little bit that time. Six point lead. Rachel Friends can really run the basketball court. Norm Schur wants a timeout, wants to stop it right now. The run that you were talking about may have been starting right there, and Norm wants to stop it. Six points, the biggest lead of the game. On the offensive end, if as they pick up, if Thames picks up this ball and gives Sutherland a good pass, that's a two-bounce pass, that's awful. Sutherland now has to take the ball into the trees, doesn't get anything accomplished. If Thames picks up the ball, gives a chest pass, that's an easy shot. Kansas will push the basketball, Hass 
Boy, easy pass, easy layup. LaFrance outruns everyone in the white uniform. At 6'11", and just a sophomore. You know, I heard some people talking this morning coming over here that the talk in Columbia, they hope Rafe LaFrance doesn't figure out how good he is until he's in the NBA. <laughs> they would like him to just kind of be quiet for a few years. But he is awfully talented. Kelly Thames to the rack. Shot no, tip good by Simeon Haley for his sixth point of the game. And a rare offensive board for Mizzou here gets them back within four. Now it's up to Missouri's defense to get a stop, and LaFrance won't let him. He has six in the second half, 13 in the game. Well, they're trying to find a mismatch, and this time it's Thames on LaFrance. Just can't stay with him in the height department. Haley over Pollard, who has three fouls. Simeon Haley with two quick buckets. They're going to go at Pollard, who has three. John Vaughn with the penetration in the dish. And the shot won't fall. It's off of Missouri's hands. Kelly Thames says no. has been in a somewhat of a shooting slump the last three ball games, including today. He has four of his last 17 from the field. So Kansas can test everything, every pass, every touch. They've got a hand on the ball, and Missouri is really not doing a real good job of simply grabbing the basketball when they have an opportunity here. Blocking out, going to the, going to the basketball. This time, Mizzou takes it away. Tigers down four. And the lob too tall to Julian Winfield, and right back to Kansas it comes. Well, we're talking about grabbing the basketball. Pierce, I thought he was going to shoot it, can't get a handle on it, and then still didn't have a handle on it. Tried to make a pass. Hard to pass it with the heel of the hand. <laughs> That's right. 44 40, Kansas. Pollard to Vaughn. They're going to go back to the French with things on him. Spinner to the baseline, and he's double teamed. Moore knocked it out of his hands. It'll be Kansas basketball with 18 left on the shot clock. Good help. Good help by Kendrick Moore that time. LaFrance well, waits a little bit too long. That allows Kendrick to go after the ball. He waits till the ball's on the floor, and then he goes after it. Pass. Shot no, and he continues to have trouble shooting it. And now a foul call on Simeon Haley over the back. That's his third foul. KU shooting 38% in the first half of this game. Jared Hess having a lot of trouble with it. He's one for seven now in this game. Four for his last 17. Pass. The Prince. Pollard working inside against Simeon Haley. Now both of them have three fouls, and now they've got another foul, and that time they got Scott Pollard, and that's his fourth. Pollard's fourth foul comes with 17.30 left in the game. Well, you called it, Fred. You had two guys with three fouls. Simeon Haley has been battling all afternoon. Gives up a little in the weight department. They're pushing seven. Pollard gets position right here. Backs up in there. And whistle for the foul. Picks up his fourth. That's a big call. Pollard fouled out of two games this year. One of only two Jayhawks to have fouled out of a game. Missouri down four. The lob to Winfield. Worked that time. Well, the fast pick from Kelly Thames, lack of communication by Kansas, perfect pass by Kendrick Moore. They just tried it and missed, and they went right back to it, and they got it. And that's got the crowd excited. Two-point Kansas lead with 17.02 to play. And now the Tigers step up the defensive pressure. Oh, Paul Pierce took care of it. Oh, boy. <laughs> How do you silence a crowd? Oh. This freshman's terrific. Eight points, Paul Pierce. Jayhawks by four. A team with great poise. Inside they go to Haley. Does he want it? They'll take it. No, he's going to be called for the walk. That's the second time that's happened. The city on Haley today. Norm Stewart upset with it. Let's take a look at the last alley-oop. Kelly Thames is going to put a back pick on. Kendrick Moore is a called play. You don't see the back pick. Back pick, Bill. B.J. Williams got caught looking. Julian Winfield has 10. And there's the other <laughs> finish. Paul Pierce has eight. No help side defense. Winfield in double figures for only the fourth time in 17 games this year. Scoring is really not his game. A lot of other good things are. Now Richard Blowing the former Prince gets the shot up and the Jayhawks turn it over on the travel. Norm Stewart and Roy Williams. Roy sitting down right now. Norm up working hard. 
Jared Hass for the foul. Watching Norm Stewart, that's Jared Hass third foul. The big tiger is growling over there today. He's pumped and wants this ball to be. <laughs> Been through a few of those, hasn't he? Yeah. You mentioned earlier, the next game he will have coached or played in half of Missouri's games. Is that all the game? It's really amazing. The player, assistant coach, coach. They lost a fire. No, he hasn't. Speaking of coaches, we haven't lost their fire. Julian Winfield. Nice shot. His ball play. Jack Hartley coming out of retirement last night, coaching the K-State Rivers team to a Surprised me when I read the paper this morning, too. Two-point lead, Kansas, LaFrance. Bond right back inside, LaFrance working for the shot. And knocked out of there, Lock off Kansas, out of bounds to Missouri. Haley doing an outstanding job in the post. The Tigers helping out, Winfield's excited. We've got a ball game. Emma, it seems like we've known each other forever. Mm, yeah, I know. Two weeks. Will you marry me? Because, Emma, I love you, man. Oh, Johnny, you're not getting my Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Johnny? Make it a Bud Light. Jane? It's Joan. Jane, Joan, whatever. I feel like I've known you forever. We weathered some of the worst storms, survived some of the most brutal punishment, dealt by the elements and the economy. We've helped millions of families throughout the heartland of America do the same. And together, we've come through stronger, more resilient than ever. For home, car, and life insurance, we're proud to be your shield of shelter. Shelter Insurance will always be there for you. Come to Georgetown, you'll be a big man on campus. At Indiana, you'll be on national TV. you get a great education. A college degree. And all the crunchy tacos you can eat. Soft taco. Crunchy. Soft. Crunchy. Soft. Another double-decker taco, son? Thanks. Coach? Coach. Coach. Now try the bacon double-decker tacos from Taco Bell. Two new ways to bring soft and crunchy together for one big sizzling taste. A little something for the road, boys? Back again in Studio 66, an update from Boulder, Colorado 62, UMKC 36. The Buffs doing a good job. Let's find out what's going on in Norman. An easy entry pass here by Mississippi State and an easy basket by Darrell Wilson. For right now, the lead belongs to Mississippi State 41-33. Let's take you back to Fred and John in Columbia. 46-44 here. KU by two, John Sanders. We had a heck of a basketball game here. Six has been the biggest lead of the day. And that didn't last very long. And as you saw, they withheld the run. Norm Stewart had a pretty big timeout after two early baskets by Kansas that stopped everything. Missouri right back in the ballgame. Shot five in the bucket. Well, nine for Murray. First thing you learn about basketball when you get back, stop the ball. Someone pick up that basketball. Kansas by four. Seven and has the answer at the other end. He has 14 points. He just missed a three-point try and came right back and got it. And again, a two-point ball game. Sutherland with Vaughn. D.J. Williams set a pick on Sutherland. He fought through it. Now Billy Thomas can shoot it. That was too strong. Off the board. Picked off by Missouri. It's going to be Missouri ball. It got the top of the board. One of the best things I like about Jock Vaughn, he makes great decision that ends the play. A lot of times he'll stop, bring it back out. He'll go till you stop it. That time an easy layup. A high quality player, this young man. There's Jacques Vaughn. KU led by two at halftime. We played five minutes and 12 seconds in the second half. They still lead by two. Each team has scored 10. Danny Alouche replaces Kendrick Moore for Missouri. So Julian Winfield operating at the point right now for Missouri. He's pretty versatile, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Not the surest of ball handlers. He's solid. But have to be careful around Vaughn. Vaughn is quick handle. Alouche found Thames. Thames. Tried to drop it inside, knocked out of there, saved by Alouche. Lucky bounce for Mizzou that time. Now Sutherland. Thames goes to work, and he's going to be called for a while. Trying to drive on P.J. Williams. We've seen a lot of traveling calls in this game. You see that call a lot when you fake one way and go the other way. Most guys don't get the ball down before they lift the back foot up. Lee might have crossed him that time. 
Down inside to the baseline. Shot no. And a tough rebound that time to Simeon Haley. Simeon's having to do some ball game here. Got two quick buckets to start the second half for Missouri. They've got Pollard in foul trouble. He sat down with four fouls on it. Winfield wants to post that long. Sutherland in trouble with it. Alouche. And inside it goes Haley. Nice dish right back to Kelly Thames. And fouled from behind by B.J. Williams, who stopped the easy basket that time. The recognition early by the Tigers wasn't very good to try to post up Winfield, but finally they get it to Haley. Watch his pass. He has played terrific this afternoon. Good look at the pass. B.J. Williams thought he had all ball. Kelly Thames at the free throw line. 79% shooter, two for two today with six points this afternoon. He's averaging 14 a game, got some blood on the uniform. That's not an unusual sight in a KU Missouri contest. <laughs> <laughs> there have been some wars. Aim for the miss. Congratulations to Missouri gymnast Sharif Shrupp. Shrupp won the floor exercise at the Cat Classic last weekend in Columbia. Now the friends replaces T.J. View for Kansas. Sophomore replaces the freshman. He only loses three seniors off this team, and Sean Pearson, the only one of them that plays very much. They're in pretty good shape for another year or two to come. Well, they're going to make a good run this year, have a chance to win the national championship. Outstanding ball club. They're covered in all areas, and then they all come back and give it a shot next year. Seven points, Kelly Thames, one point in Kansas, 13.50 left in the game. Sutherland with shot on, and Bond spins by and gets the deuce to the deep corner, and Williams knocks it down. And that's Pearson. Pearson, Pearson. Pearson. Excuse me, Paul Pierce. Actually, Sean Pearson as he goes by. Pearson is a shooter. Started last year, this year has to come off the bench, but when he gets a stroke going, he can make a lot of three-pointers. Alouche picks up the loose ball, shoots the fadeaway. Look at Kelly Thames go at it. And a foul call. That time it was the Tigers storming the glass. Well, no quit in the Tigers this afternoon, and we wouldn't expect so, but this time a little more aggressive on the board. Thames gets up quickly. B.J. Williams with another foul. Second on B.J. Williams, 13-22 to play. Kansas by four. And Kelly Thames, who just hit one of up two, right back to the line. Could be a little milestone right here for Kelly Thames. The sophomore from St. Louis Jennings High School. Can't wait to see him next year. I have a feeling that knee is going to be a whole lot better when he's going to be back to more of what we saw as a freshman. It normally takes a full year of playing after you've had surgery to really recover and get your knee. He's had a nice year, outstanding year, still not doing some of the things he could do when he was Big 8 Freshman of the Year. Some of us physical, and some of us just going to the point where you can forget about it and believe it. Yeah, North Shore's happy, though. This young man's back. He means a lot to this ball club. He's a great young man to be around. He's a warrior. 51-29 in Kansas. Bill Hawks the ball. 13-11 left in the game. Thomas. Billy Thomas has seven. And not let that young man get his feet set. Once he gets the radar set up, he's going to make most of them. Make it eight for Billy Thomas. He's out of there. And Jack Bond comes up with it. And Pearson fouled by Sutherland as he went to the bucket. First on Sutherland. Good hands by Williams on a defensive end. Starts the whole break, and Bond gives it up to a teammate. Well, B.J. Williams has some quick hands. Good pass by Alouche. Thames again thinks he's got a wide open. Might have lost a handle before Williams tipped it away. And they go to the other end. Sutherland makes a good, clean, hard foul and puts Pearson on the free throw line. Barry Quinn checks in. 6'10", Jr. replacing Kelly Thames. Three-point tries in this game. KU shot 13 threes, Missouri three. Jayhawks have hit four of them, Missouri two. Pearson good. Yeah, you mentioned Grimm checking in. Has no points. Has averaged nearly 16 points the last seven games. So he's an outside shooter. Can shoot it from the outside. Loves to go to free throw line. We'll see if he can get on track. Pearson one for two. Now the Jayhawks by six. Matching their biggest lead of the game. A little five point run here. Seven to two. They've outscored Mizzou since the Tigers got us within one on Kelly Payne's free throw. Grimm can shoot a three, but he dishes inside to Simeon. He lost it. For a moment, got it to a loose. The shot won't fall. And Grimm trying to battle. John Vaughn comes away with the rebound. 
Sutherland trying to catch up with him. And down. Foul caught the Jack Bond poster. Williams, Jack Bond. Williams battling down inside with Gary Grimm. LaFrench sets a pick. Bond boosts to the corner. That corner's been good to him. That one won't fall. John Person couldn't knock that one down. Bond runs the pick and roll so well because he drags his defense. He makes it hard around that corner, so that draws the defense. Out of bounds to Missouri. 25 left on the shot clock. 12 left in the game. Kansas by six. This could be a big position for Missouri. That might sound a little silly with 12 minutes left in a six-point game. But the force of Kansas' will continues to force and force and force. And again, you have to stop that run. Well, you talked about they're on a 7-2 run. Winfield's just going to let it go out of bounds. Look at the hustle by the senior. This is his last time. Mr. Pearson's in this Hearn Center. He'd like to go away with a win. Grim against Williams, and Williams being called for a little push outside. E.J. Williams' foul is his third. We saw that in the Nebraska game. What teams are now doing defending Derek Grimm is making him put it on the floor, but he can draw some fouls because he can dribble, and he'll pick up big men fouls. We'll take a break with 11.50 to play, and Kansas up six. Let's go now to a message from your hometown Phillips 66 station, where you'll find good things for cars from the people who drive them. For the most part, People look to their cars as a way to get where they're going. And if your car doesn't perform, well, you could end up somewhere you don't want to be. We don't want that. That's why, for nearly 80 years, people from far and wide have counted on Phillips to get them on their way. Mile after mile, year after year. For all the miles to come, Phillips 66, the performance company. Ford F-Series has been the best-selling truck in the world for 19 straight years. Now we're about to launch the next in line. The all-new 1997 Ford F-150. More power. More V8 payload. More new ideas. The new Ford F-150. Strength after strength after strength. I used to keep my money under my mattress. But that'd be a mite lumpy these days. You see, your old pal Scratchy's been winning major bucks playing them instant scratch games from the Kansas Lottery. <laughs> like this one right here. Play Wild Time Doubler from the Kansas Lottery. With a chance to double your winnings, it's an instant way to make your day. They used to call me Scratchy. But now I'm a thinking folks are gonna call me Mr. Scratchy. <laughs> Today's game is brought to you in part by Sonic, who invites you to drive in for a change. Stop by your nearest Sonic now and register to win tickets to the final Phillips 66 Big A tournament. 11.50 to play. Kansas by six. They contest every inbounds pass, everything you do. They got a hand out there. Yeah, and you have to be ready. You just have to make harder moves. Go to the basketball when it's being passed to you. A loose, wide open. Three-point lead, Kansas. Pearson trying to answer, short with a try. Winfield to Alouche. And Alouche is going to take it to the rack. Well, Danny Alouche didn't play much early in the year. He's known as a shooter, didn't shoot any, any, any shots. But he came out of his funk against Oklahoma, played well against Nebraska, and now he's starting well this late in the half. It's a one-point ball game. LaFrentz along the baseline. Haley shuts him down. Alouche takes it away. Kendrick Moore is out against Vaughn and fouled. And the shot didn't fall. He did a great job of getting the shot up. Is it going to be it's an intentional foul? It'll be two in possession for Mizzou. And that surprises Jock Vaughn. Kendrick Moore taking it strong to the basket. Vaughn just wants to make a hard foul. Roy Williams can't believe it. Jock Vaughn talking it over with the referee. Vaughn wants to make a hard foul. Now, he's ahead of the basketball. I'm not sure, although as he's down below, he's pulling him down. I guess that's what the referee called. Grabbed him with the left as he went by, and that pulls him down. And to John Vaughn, I told referee, I was really trying to keep him up, not to hurt him. But, uh, you know, a referee has to make that call. 
That was, that was my thought that he was just trying to support him and he was spinning in the air and then it turned into a draw. We are tied at 55. Missouri has the position. 10.58 to play. First tie we've had since 15 to 15. The eighth tie in the ball game. We had seven ties when the game was 15 to 15. That is the first tie since then. Sutherland, Brim, and push. The foul is going to go against Kansas. Derek Grimm may have gotten by with one right there. I think Grimm got away with a forearm. A Grimm, we talked about averaging 60 points, hasn't even shot the ball once. Kansas has done an outstanding job getting into Derek Grimm, not allowing him the freedom to get the shot up. Second foul on Paul Pierce, Derek Grimm, an 89% free throw shooter on the line. In the win over Nebraska, Missouri hit 40 out of 47 free throws in that game. They've outscored their opponents at the line this year by 107 points. They're 14 for 19 today. They're the first point of the ball game in the first lead they had since it was 11 to 10. And it's only been the biggest lead of six all day. That's how tight this game has been and how long Kansas held the lead. If you're a young player at home, watch how simple Grimm keeps the free throw. Lines himself up, lines it up, just shoots it in. Nothing funny about them spinning the ball and then his knees. I mean, just, just simple and keeps it easy. Missouri by two, 10.47 to play. They've taken the lead and they've taken the crowd along with them. And now Grimm may be called for a foul down at the baseline. Nope, they're going to just call it an out of bounds. Yep. Missouri with an 8-0 run here. It'll be Kansas ball inbounds. Yeah, and I've talked about inbounds passes a couple of times. And it's not that easy. People sometimes say all they have to do is get an inbounds. Try it sometimes. Yeah, not easy at all. The inbounds passer is a very important effect. And you have to be more efficient when you set your pitch because defensively it's easier to trap them into one over. Got fine. Pick for a fence and suddenly picked off the fence as he tried to come through the lane. And now a foul called. Simeon Haley holding the fence down inside has drawn his fourth foul with 10.33 left in the game. He'll be replaced by Monty Hart. It has been physical. Good job by Sutherland stopping the French progress across the lane. That's what you're taught to do. That time they got Simeon Haley at the hold. Again, his fourth, he'll come out. And Monty Hart. I will say that Simeon Haley has worked extremely hard in this ball game. He's had an outstanding game. And Missouri takes it back. Tigers by two with the basketball. 10.25 to play. And they've got the crowd involved here in hers right now. You mentioned before the game, John, if you're Kansas, you want to sit him down. If you're Missouri, you want to keep him excited all day. Hard. Kendrick Moore can't get it. Hard just got it. Slipped out of his hands. Out of bounds to Missouri. 17 left on the shot clock. Well, Monty Hard just put two passes together this afternoon. A couple of them. That one was outstanding. Now Kendrick Moore will. No, Julian Winfield will handle the inbounds pass to Grimm, who backs out to the corner for the shot and won't fall. Paul Pierce got a hip into Jason Sutherland. Sutherland's on the floor, and they're playing five on four for a few seconds. So Jason can catch up. Pass goes to work on the baseline. Cut shot, won't fall. Rebound, Jason Sutherland. He caught up and he's out the board. Now, what do you say about that? He's totally out of the play, but then he ends up with the rebound. Great hustle. Monty Hard with a catch inside, working hard for it. Taken away by Kansas, B.J. Williams to fall. Pierce fouled hard by Monty Hard. We've, we've had so many bodies on the floor. I thought Vaughn this time should have given the ball up earlier to Pierce. He could have finished right here if he gives the ball to him. He has a dunk. He waits too long. Vaughn goes into Sutherland. They crash. Hart tries to block the shot. Draws a contact. That's one of the times when you have a player like Pierce who may want to give it to this kind of kid earlier because he can take a bounce and explode to the goal. Great points for Pierce so far today with 6 6 50. That was the third foul on Monty Harge with 929 left in the game. 939. There's the foul trouble for both teams. Pollard and Haley have four. Ash Williams, Grimm, and Harge all have three. And we have 939 to play. And those are important people we're talking about. Yeah, you think of the foul by Harge. Paul Pierce, one of the weaknesses is he shoots 57% from the free throw. Pierce gets KU within one. 
And the press on for Kansas. They get it to Sutherland. They're going to beat the press. Sutherland immediately goes to the bucket. Oh! What a shot. That's the third running shot like that he's made in this ball game. He has 16. Tigers by three. Vaughn trying to tie it. And hard to the rebound. The Kendrick Moore. And he goes into the crowd in her. Monty Hard, straightaway shot, missed everything. And P.J. Williams to Vaughn with the rebound. Oh, got right it. back at him. Oh. Holy smoke. Jacques Vaughn got it. We're looking at some outstanding <laughs> plays this afternoon. Watch how Sutherland kind of puts his head down. He's going to the hole. Vaughn is as tough a defender as you want. Sutherland makes the off bad shot. Jock Vaughn makes his mind up right here. I can get it to the hole. Winfield, good defense. Not quite good enough. Draws a contact a little left. High off the glass. Barry Greenwood places hard. And now Danny Alouche in the game for Missouri. Will replace Kendrick Moore. Jock Vaughn with 11 points, four assists today. Three out of four at the free throw line. Now watch him rehearse this thing before he shoots it. When they get in the ball, this is where he takes a lot of time. He'll hold it. Well, they, they were counting at Nebraska. Oh, boy. <laughs> they still count that out. Well, he's not going to do it. Usually he'll hold the ball in his left hand and take a, a rehearsal with his right. Jock Vaughn, old fashioned three. He has a dozen. We're tied at 59. The ninth tie in this ball game today. Danny Alouche, Pierce Whipping, Baines against LaFrance. Julian Winfield, soft jumper in the lane, no, and LaFrance high to scrape it off the board. Telling you, this is well, this is a fun. chance you can see it on that man's face right there. He looked at Par Paul Pierce. There was nothing there, nowhere to go, and he forced the action and kicked the ball out of bounds. Each possession now, though we have eight and a half minutes left, becomes important to try to grasp part of this game, try to get it in your control. Twice it looked like KU might make a run, and Missouri's been able to stop that twice. And stay right with it. Now Sutherland to Grimm. Hunt fake twice. Shot no. And a foul on Ray LaFrance. His third. Made 20 to play. And the foul troubles continue to mount for both sides. Ryan Robertson checking into the game for Kansas now. Jared Hass will take a breather. Pass today has managed one three-point field goal, and that's been it. He's been in a shooting slump of late. And that was to start the game off for Kansas. Sutherland hit the first one. Pass came back, hit the next one for the first one for Kansas, and he hasn't scored since. He's one for eight from the field today. Gary Grimm, three points in this game, all at the line. This game has really been a test of walls, and both ball clubs have answered it, and it's going to remain that way now for the last 8-15. And Missouri with a smaller lineup. Grimm is 6'10". He's inside. The Haley Twins on the bench, as is Hard. Oh, what a tough rebound. Paul Pierce put the twice and got it. What a tough, tough board for Paul Pierce after a great catch and a miss by the Prince. Went high over everybody. Kelly Thames at the other end. Oh, a tough shooting left for Kelly Thames at Wooden Fall. That was for the lead, and now Kansas has the ball. That one from Thames might have been a heartbreaker. Vaughn flips the pass to Pierce. Thames with the board. Thanks to the Jay Williams. It's out of bounds. It'll be Missouri basketball. Great no call by the referee that time. Roy Williams wanted a call that time. Didn't get it. Scott Pollard's going to return to the lineup for Kansas. When we come back, we've got a break. 7.39 to play. Flat tie of 61, and we're back after this message from Southwest Airlines. Flying the low airline is just plain smart. 1996 will be an election year, which means promises to lower prices, raise employment, and get this country flying high again. Funny sounds like every year at Southwest Airlines, except that this year we turn 25. 
1996 will be a big year for sports, which means lots of quick turns, lots of short flights, and lots of celebrating. Funny? Sounds like every year at Southwest Airlines. Except that this year, we turn 25. Last year, nearly 8 million people had their lives turned upside down by unemployment. Hate to say it, but that's life. We're the first company that allows unemployed clients greater access to their annuity without a penalty. And that can help a lot until things get straightened out. That's New York Life, the company you keep. How do you amaze an amazing mouth? Well, why not start with Long John Silver's Flaky Fish? The batter dip twist no mouth can resist. Pick up our crunchy golden shrimp or tender all-white chicken. Famous batter dip fish, chicken, and shrimp. Three delicious ways to amaze your mouth. Only at Long John Silver's. Oh, yes. It's the amazing 25-cent shrimp sale. Golden batter dip shrimp, now just a quarter each, no limit. From Studio 66, the Sooners trying to catch up with the Bulldogs. Nice short jumper by Abercrombie here. They were down 16-3 early. Let's see what the score is right now. Yes, 62-49. Also, Colorado is winning big 22-75-53 over UMKC. Let's take it back to Fred. Fred, you've got a good one going today. Got a great one going, John. 61 all tie, 7-31 to play. Mizzou basketball. Kelly Thames against Pollard, who's back in the Kansas lineup. He has four fouls. Julian Winfield with a beautiful reverse for his 15th point. We've seen Missouri get back to us a couple times. That's one of the weaknesses when you overplay defensively all the time. Weak side help has to be ready for that.